Yeah, you're you're peeking into my into my microphone, honey. Lobby, you're going into the into the stream. What? You're you're talking into the stream. We can hear you. So shush, please. I'm streaming a very important stream. The <laughs> internet wants to know what the 20 best photos for Contest Gumpla and GR. That's why you're here. Well, and also quiet. for Sig for Watch. <laughs> Sig for over, Watch in the background. Over, yeah. <laughs> over, over Sig. Over Sig. Six and Mason's looking forward to it. Lots of hype in the chat. Super, super excited for all of you to hang out and have a good time tonight. My shirt is inside out, actually, because um, branding, basically. I don't, I don't, Brand. need, I don't need to show Whatever. off branding on my stream. Over Sig. All right. Well, let's start with the uh, with the top twenty. Um, so the first entry, and we're gonna talk about each of these photos, how they could have been better, how they are really really good, all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and pull up our first one, which is from Sergeant Toast here from the Bad Gunpla Discord server. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This is a Gundam Mark. II if I remember correctly. Is that right? No, it's a ground type. It's a ground type. Excuse me. See, I'm really bad with the exact kinds of mobile suits that these things are. This isn't a bad shot. I, I liked it a lot. I like when people are using... And another thing with this contest is that the that the photos had been taken in a public place. That's something I didn't mention during my, my intro. These had to have been taken in a public place, not just with your phone camera, but also out and about. So I like when people were using nature and and trying to like show it off almost like a like post battle. I feel like a lot of people use that trope and this this one mm -hmm. I think pulled it off pretty well. You know, it's a very in focus shot. The colors are really nice. The the separation from the grass is really nice. And you can clearly see that this thing has kind of been left over from a battle. What do you guys think? Fake gun of fan alert from Sixer Mason. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> so I think I had this criticism from the uh, last contest, but I'm not a fan of grass in these shots. Why Just is that? because it looks so... Uh, I can tell that's... It messes with my scaling of things yeah, in a uh, way that's not contributing to the illusion. It yeah, takes me out of it. I had the, a, a lot of the exact same uh, criticisms last time as well. Um, you know, I recognize that these are definitely like, you know, 10 inch plastic model figures, but as for like a photography thing and uh, um, for just, just to keep me involved and to not ruin my suspension of disbelief, um, these are ostensibly supposed to be, you know, 15, 20 meter tall mechs. And to an extent. Yeah, to an extent. And when they're laying down in, in grass and shrubbery and things like that, it it either lets me makes me believe that the grass is, you know, 15, 20 feet tall, or this is definitely a, a, an eight, 8 to 10 inch uh, plastic model kit. Um, but... Other than that, it's it's a well composed photo. Um, I definitely can appreciate uh, the theme of a you know destroyed derelict uh, mech um, as a uh, as a uh, as a trope, and it's it's Absolutely. definitely one that we saw a lot of um, during this contest. We did, and you know I like a lot of the shots that we have that are in this kind of trope. If I'm honest, I think that mm -hmm. this one is it's not. Um, it's not bad. Like, I really do like it a lot. Um, kind of like what you said, we're having these, and it's mainly the thick grass mm -hmm. that you'll see here. Like, there are different kinds of grass that are much thinner. Think of what you find in, like, a golf course, for example. If the if the grass is super short, it's usually it really cuts down on this whole effect of, you know, we see this, this tall grass that kind of cuts down on the scale, that sort of thing. That can really be helped by having shorter grass. You know, just cut your lawn. That's really all you got to do. Like it, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like much, but that's all you got to do sometimes. But you know? Jason, these people aren't responsible for cutting this grass because it's a public place. Very true. You know that's you know you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So you go find somewhere with better landscaping, like a golf course, for example. Yeah. That is an option that you can do. Yeah. 
A couple awesome. people saying, where are the feet? No feet, no win. That's something from the first contest. And that kind of does go back to framing, you know? Like, But I think for... For a kit that's left over like this, or for a, for a robot that's left over like this, like cutting off the l bottom of the legs actually works okay, because it mm -hmm. shows it's kind of discarded. Like I would have liked to have this angle a little bit lower to add to the sense of scale. Remember, from for the seminars that I've run, if you have your camera lower to the to the ground, so like to the to the um, the horizontal plane that you're that you're focus in this case this kit is sitting on, then it's going to look like it's much larger when that camera is much closer to the ground. So that's something to keep in mind if you are shooting in public that would make this feel a lot larger than it is. For all intents and purposes, I feel like this would be kind of like a drone shot. You know, like if you had like a like a quadrocopter drone flying over the surface, you kind of get a shot like this. But I do actually like, and I want to point this out real quick, I like how the arm is clearly, oops, it's clearly off to the side here. And let me try to zoom in on that. I like that the arm is kind of off to the side over on this side here because it's out of focus. And that shows the kind of scale that these, these things are supposed to have. These kind of kits work really well with what's called a shallow depth of field. And I don't know why that's not showing up on my um, on my OBS, but you can see over on the left-hand side that the, that the, I guess it's like the kit right arm is in the background, out of focus, shows that damage has been done. And obviously the paint job has a big part to do with that as well, but that breaks up what would have been a ton of negative space in the background. And frankly, I think this would have been a lot better even if the arm was a little bit further back because that would break up this big negative space that we have here on the left-hand side. I do still think that's a very good shot and I think you did a really good job with it. And I would like to have seen that be a little bit further back. Any last thoughts on this one before we move on to this one? So going back to the feet being cut off thing, I don't actually have a problem with that in this picture. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going because it's trying to create the uh, scent. It's trying to distort the sense of scale. So not having the feet in view helps with that. Yeah, you're getting yelled at for your loud typing. <laughs> well, uh, we're also getting yelled at for not uh, identifying whose whose photo this is. On, oh yeah, uh, I'm, well I did say at the very beginning screen. this is this is Sergeant <clears throat> Toast. I don't have a yeah. way to display that on the stream. Well, I might. Um, I might be able to do that. Actually, let me um, make a quick adjustment here. I might be able to assist with that. Eh, not really. All right. So yeah, we're just gonna have to go with with what I say, I guess. Yeah. I'll, I'll nope. type it out in uh, in chat. Or you know what I could do? Actually, good idea here. I can just make a little text box and just type what it says. Um, let's say entry names. We'll just make a quick text box. And this one again is SGT T-O-A-S-T. And we'll just put this like over here on the bottom. And I'll add AM. But thank you for bringing that up. That's good feedback. I'll just put like a little drop shadow on it just so it's a little bit easier to read. All right, can you guys read that okay? Down there on the bottom, Sergeant Toast. Six Is that a little better? Yep. A little better, yeah. Seems all right to me. Maybe we'll throw an outline on it as well. Make it real easy to read. There we go. Yeah, that's way easier to read. So this is again from Sergeant Toast. It's called yep. Bad Gun Bluff for a reason. How dare you? I swear to God. Because that, that joke has tonight. never been made on this stream. Never. Can confirm. <laughs> Glorious, it looks like karaoke subtitles. Uh, Tic Tac Panda, if you want to refresh your stream, it will have the correct title. I did change it uh, when I started the stream. It should say Recontestable 2, Recontestable NG Top 20. Um, so yeah, this is something but, different for you, then you may need to refresh. But it's there's a typo. Is there? It's it's Contrast Gunpla. Oh, my B. Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's, that's that. what they're complaining of. There we go. We fixed it. I, I might have had a couple GNTs before the stream tonight, so we'll blame it on that. <laughs> All right. Oh. Thank you for the 54 viewers, by the way. Tons of viewers tonight. Thank you so much, guys. Well, let's move on to the next one. This one comes from Anonymous with three S's in his name here. Let me, let me update this real quick. This is... Anonymous. There we go. Anonymous. 
And I really dig the contrast on this one. One of the most difficult things to do whenever you're working with outside is working with lighting. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you're working outside and you're working in public, your work, your light source is the sun and you're kind of at its mercy. If you have an overcast sky, it's going to be a very flat shot. If you have it clear skies like this one mostly is, you're going to have a lot of contrast in your shot. And I think this one actually worked really well. It looked like the the sun was actually um behind and to the right of the kit on this one that made for some pretty dramatic lighting. What do you guys think on this one? This is pretty good. Uh, I get a weird sense of tranquility from this that I wouldn't really expect from a 50 foot tall walking tank. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree yeah. with that. I definitely agree with that. I think that there's a good point that's brought up in the chat right now. Again, with the scale, says Tic Tac Panda. You're not wrong. He looks like he's on a green screen, totally in shade with a bright background. I dig it. Yeah, and that's what I like about it is that there is really good contrast with the bright background. Um, I think what's throwing off its scale on this one is that there's a very deep depth of field and what i mean by that is that you have the face in or the uh, the head in focus you've got the rifle in focus you've got the side in focus the only thing that gets out of focus is the front knee on the very bottom and mm -hmm. because of that you're not getting that shallow depth of field that makes it feel gigantic um yeah and, mm -hmm. this isn't a 50 foot tall walking robot this is a dude hanging out by the campfire assembling his rifle yeah, like this is a this would be a great cosplay photo. I think is the best way to put it. You know, like this would be really good at human scale. Um, there is some, you know, there's some some basic framing issues. Um, there's a lot of negative space on the left hand side. You just have the kind of the sky back there, and that's not that interesting. Um, something to keep in mind if you are taking photos of your own kits, try to utilize as much of the frame as possible. You can definitely use negative space to your advantage, but with it having trees and clouds and branches in the background on that left hand side, you want to have it be something that you actually want to look at. Right? Like there's there's a lot of really, really good stuff here. I think that the lighting on this is phenomenal. I oh, yeah. I would have, if I were to take this photo, I would have probably actually turned the subject a little bit so that the branches weren't in the shot and we just had the sky. That, I think, and actually playing with the aspect ratio to make it more of a vertically tall photo instead of it being a square would have worked really, really well because, again, the lighting on this is fantastic. I think it's actually a really good picture. Just a couple little tweaks would have made this thing amazing. But still, Anonymous, I think you did a great, great job. Loving the visor reflection. It adds a lot. Yeah, totally agree. And that goes back to the lighting. You're getting that reflection from the sun off of the lighting and or off of the uh, off of the visor, and that makes for some really cool glare effects, a much more dramatic contrast in your lighting. That's great use of natural lighting, which is frankly a lot more difficult to work with than people might think. So great, yeah. great work on that. Yeah, that my my primary thoughts on the uh, on the photo, especially when I first saw it uh, submitted, um, I knew this one was going to get top twenty pretty much immediately. Largely because of the lighting, uh, it did a really great job uh, utilizing what was available um, at that time of day. It, it makes it really dramatic and, and really great. Totally agree. Totally agree. McGumpla saying, how can we trust a drunk man who can't even type Recon Test Blood to judge out photos? Okay, to be fair, I'm not actually drunk. I had like like one or two it's fine it's not a big deal I'm, I, just, <laughs> I, I just had a single drink to help with the uh, aren't you nursing you're not supposed to drink <laughs> you just had a child how dare you it's fine it helps with is it yeah it helps with the teething doesn't it yeah it helps, it helps with, me a little, little bit a little bit of whiskey on the, <laughs> on the bottle and it, it just goes away jason is a cheap date you are absolutely correct will you review the worst photos ah no. Ma no, 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 nah. we're not going to shit on people. Yeah, that. exactly. That that just that makes people feel bad for the hard work that they did. That's that's not fun. I swear, officer, I only had one drink. Listen, there are these things called slow and low rock and rye, which I had one of today. They are one of my favorite things. They are an old fashioned. If you're not familiar, an old fashioned is rye whiskey, uh, Agnostura bitters, sugar cube you can add honey if you want and a splash of water this is that in a can 
So you just pour it over ice and you have it old fashioned. It's amazing. So I had one of those before the stream along with a gin and tonic. I'm feeling pretty good. So mm -hmm. yeah, not not enough to get me like completely blissed, but enough to just kind of relax because I'm, you know, this is this is a big deal stream. This is a big deal stream. In complete defiance to all expectations, I am completely You are completely sober? Being on topic doesn't exactly go with amazingly with bad gumpless streams. We're gonna stay on topic as much as we can by going to our next entry, number three. This one, this one I love. This one from Ozzy Craft, aka Jack Osborne, on the Bad Gunpla Discord server. This one looks incredible. I love the framing on this. This again from Ozzy Craft. Let me type his name out real quick. I love so the framing. So to answer on this. your question there, Pokemon Pokenom, we had 62 entries this contest. There you go. I did. I actually did. I didn't even count. So thank you for that. So let's just let this one yeah. sink in for a second. I, I adore just, this shot. You're right. You're right. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. You you make a, a really good point. This I love. This is one of the few shots that make an amazing use of the background in the shot. Where I see some people talking about where's the pose. The pose in this case, I don't think matters as much because you have the two suits surrounded by what are clearly graves. This is the only shot that we had that was shot at a grave site in what appears to be a, not a mass grave site, but what could very well be a military grave site or somewhere this, that clearly evokes a sense of large scale war. This, this shot is, is special. The lighting might not be amazing. It is kind of flat. But the the use of a background in this shot, I think, is amazing. Yeah. Yes, this is like just about certainly a military grave. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think a couple things about this shot. Um, uh, I, I of course I really enjoy the background. Um, it, it it really took the theme of the contest of taking this out in a, a public place to a nice almost extreme um because it, it takes i would i would say it takes a lot of guts to go out to a, a, a graveyard to take photos for for with your the hobby. mausoleum in the background you can see as well yeah exactly um that said uh, it does suffer from some artifact uh artifacting issues uh, um the lighting not great but it it sort of works for the atmosphere you know it's 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 an overcast picture you're in a graveyard you you really you can feel the somber uh, atmosphere um of this photo uh mcdumpla saying you know again with the grass yeah that's you're yeah. right the grass the grass is it, again um kind of throwing it off i would have again loved to have seen this photo probably try to have taken from a either a lower uh angle pointing up to give us a better sense of scale and also to you know bring those uh grave markers down a little bit see i actually and, i actually disagree so, with that i actually disagree with that. and here's why so I, I don't mean to cut you guys off but if you, no, if no. you think about the rule of thirds on this one you have the first third of the, you have the first vertical third of the image towards the bottom being completely covered with the grass. And then that border is immediately the crosses. I actually mm -hmm. really, really like the framing on this one. I'm not so worried about the scale. Yeah, the grass makes them look a little bit smaller, whatever. But the 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 impact of seeing, like your eye is immediately drawn to that because it aligns exactly with that lower third of, mm -hmm. of, of the vertical on the image. It, it lines up perfectly. So I love the framing on this. I think that actually having that top third be mainly the overcast sky really adds to the mood of this shot. The only thing that I would have changed is I would have shot this a little bit earlier in the day. And here's why. The, the shot being overcast looks fantastic, but because of it being a, probably shot later in the day, there had to have been some editing done here that caused the extreme artifacting that you can see in the grass, especially when it's out of focus. Um, and the way that I could tell that is that if this photo is shot in low light, which this clearly was, and, and again, when you're shooting overcast, it's always going to be low light. I mean, that's definitely part of it. But the um, by, by having it in low light, you have to overcompensate by editing the photo. Right. 
So there's so by having it flat, I think that's fine lighting for this kind of a shot. I love having the overcast, but shoot a little bit earlier in the day because your your camera only sees about 10% of the light that your eye sees. So if you're shooting past like five, six o'clock in the day, it's very difficult to get that kind of detail that you're looking for. And then your the computer inside of your phone is trying to compensate for that by basically drawing in what it thinks the image is supposed to be. That causes a lot of noise. So definitely something to keep in mind with digital cameras in general, not just not just phones, but DSLRs as well suffer from this as well. My phone has so an option to do fifths or grid for grid lines. Is there any advantage over thirds? Um, not really. It really kind of depends on your preference on framing, uh, which Hunter, I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting you guys. But just to answer that question, uh, the, the main thing it really is the thirds. Um, having the fifths, which I actually have on my phone as well, um, in the app, uh, the app ProCam that I use, it, um, like it can help with, with certain kinds of shots. It really kind of depends on what you're trying to shoot is the best way I can answer that. So now that I've gotten my spiel out of the way, go ahead. So I want to talk to the artifacting of this picture and it helps me with this picture a little bit because like, it makes it feel like it's kind of an older picture. And when I think about like war and war graveyards, I think of like old pictures on black and white cameras. They're kind of out of focus. They're really blurry. And in a way it helps me connect to like experienced war through history class. If you get what I'm saying, it helps yeah. bring it home. Like the significance of this to me. Definitely. And, and Wholesome Witch, I think, makes a great point. Um, it seems like it was shot on a very high ISO. That's because of the low light. So ISO, mm -hmm. for those of you that don't know, is the simulated speed of film that digital cameras use. So the faster, quote unquote, that your film is whenever you're shooting on an analog camera that you physically like load in the reels of film into, the faster that it moves across the exposure area on the, on the back of the camera, the different than it acts, essentially. Um, by having a higher ISO setting on a digital camera, it's going to brighten up the image because the, the quote unquote film is moving faster. But the problem with that is that the digital camera isn't trying to overcompensate by, by trying to fill in those gaps that it can't physically see. So ideally you wanna have your ISO as low as possible for your lighting setup. That will make the photo darker, but that's where again lighting comes in. If this was shot a little bit earlier in the day and with a little bit lower ISO, you wouldn't have any of that artifacting in the background. Um, just something to keep in mind for you, those of you that have never kind of shot these kind of shots before. I hope that that, that gives you guys some, some info. And again, film grade that can work really well. You know, there's, there's certain shots that can work with that. I just don't think this is one of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it seems more like an accident um, mm -hmm. than, a, than a purposeful, um, you know, artistic choice. Yeah, it's a glitch, not a feature. But this is still a phenomenal shot. I, I really, really like it. I like the cool tones. Even the red is still a very cool tone uh, mm -hmm. for the light. And, and just, I, I love this shot. I think it looks really good. Absolutely. Cool. Anything else we want to talk about before we move on to the next one? Scrolling through the, through the notes here. Let us move on to the next picture. It hurts my eyes a little bit. Other than that, good shot, <laughs> says uh, NerdG97. Ringing endorsement from NerdG. <laughs> it's painful to look at it. It makes my eyes bleed. Other than that, great. All right. And this one is from Mighty Man 101. Now, look at this one in comparison to the last photo that we looked at. <laughs> because this is kind of going back to that artifact thing we were talking about. Not nearly as enough graininess, or not nearly as much, excuse me, graininess than we saw on the last one. What do you guys think about this one while I get the uh, name updated? Oh, man. I, I, I love this shot because uh, uh, I love bear guys. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. So do I. So do I. Um, the <laughs> I love how it, it it sort of almost evokes a feeling of loneliness. Yes, yes, I, yes. Know? I was gonna say that. It's like the bear guy wants to hang out over there with all of his all of his peers and 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 fellow fellow kids, but he cannot for he is a bear guy. Yep. This picture evokes a very big mood that is extremely. It, it makes me do a big oof. <laughs> we're, we're being our fellow kids right now. 
No, yeah. it's like, it's, it, you're exactly right. Like, I, I love that there's like a sense of emotion to this sort of shot. Just like with the last one that we looked at, there's a lot of emotion here because it's it's looking longingly onto this like family that's having a picnic. It's like, I want to be part of this family and, and, and I want to be, I want to be part of, of, of these people's lives, but I can't because I'm a plastic model kit from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> you know? On top of that. I think this is either a mama guy or a papa guy, so like it might be it's watching its children have having walked off to this event. You know? Hmm, that's yeah, not a bad idea. There, there's, there's, there's like a very a, strong. There's a very strong story that is being told here. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And it, it, it's almost, it's almost up to the viewer uh, to to make up the story, knowing that this is a papa guy. Is this papa guy watching as his child? goes off to, to university and, and is suddenly dealing with empty nest syndrome. <laughs> is he a chaperone at a field trip? And these are all just, you know, sixth graders at the Natural Natural History Museum. That's Who exactly knows? what Talker was talking about. Bear guy looks onto the university. He's the first bear guy his family go to go to university. He hopes he's going to be cool. Yeah, like you get a lot of that sense. So I think that the emotion of this is actually really solid. Is it a pretty basic shot? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that this kind of works really well with the sense of scale. I think that they did scale pretty well on this one because we don't see that super tall grass in this one like we've been seeing. So I think that, that that the framing in general could be a little bit better, but I like that we're not looking at like super tall grass in this one. We can clearly see the family in the back. He's facing towards it. The framing on this, the composition, it tells a story. And I think they did a really good job with that. The framing makes it feel person size as opposed to 50 foot tall walking tank size. Right, which yeah. is fine. And that's, which is fine. Yeah. That's and totally hiding, fine for the for the for the structure of this photo. <laughs> and hiding the feet like it helps with that illusion. Yeah, totally. But it, but you but you know we have to stay consistent. No feet. It's out of the top twenty. <laughs> well, it's in the top twenty. It's still oh. in the top twenty. This is the well, top twenty stream. This is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> the, the 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 feet meme continues. <laughs> yeah, you got you got to keep keep up the memes. Good. One Lord. day we will see the composition again. Cowboy shots, which are which are a thing, is like a two thirds shot. You don't have to have feet in it every single time, but that that can absolutely help your your contribution or your um your you know your 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 framing in general. Yeah. Just gonna be in mind. I think yeah. My favorite part about this photo is that it's just it's so much fun. To just assign a story to it. It it could yeah. be any any number of things, and it's it's it's. I always enjoy seeing photos that are fun. Agreed. You know, with with, with taking photos of of uh, of Gundam models, you always want to try and keep because um, Gund Gundam's a pretty pretty somber thing on the whole. So you kind of also want to keep that theme going with your photographs and making them seem you know badass and cool and edgy but it's also fun to take a picture of a bear guy and mm -hmm. uh go nuts with it what do you yeah, think my is edgy teddy mm. bear. go ahead yeah my edgy teddy bear real edge there yeah <laughs> right right well that that i think is why build divers and build fighters and all those are so popular is because like, yeah, we can have like the gritty serious realism of a Gundam show, but at the same time, some people, times people just want relaxing and fun. People like fun. We live in chaotic yeah. times. Fun is perfectly fine to have. Are you having fun over there? By the way. Heck yeah, I'm having fun. How's, Hell how's yeah. your Overwatch going? Is it going good? You having a great time? She's ignoring me. I know she can hear me. I know she's ignoring me. <laughs> This isn't going to make it into the YouTube clip. Uh, yeah, I'll have to do some no. editing around it. All right. So, but anyway, but anyway, let's move on to our next one. I think that was like the fourth photo that we did so far. It's so difficult to keep track of now because we're just jumping all over the place. Well, like I said, I'm going in order of um, of dates. Yeah. So if you like sort your folder by that, well, we can go by that. All right. Next yeah, one it was the fourth. I think so. Yeah. And this next one is from Nuclear Drake. And I like that he kind of took the idea of it being in a public place and kind of turned on it on its head a little bit. I remember him messaging me asking, is shooting the photo at a hobby shop okay? And it absolutely is. 
because it's still a public place that the general public can access. There's no mm -hmm. reason that you can't use a diorama that somebody else set up as long as mm -hmm. everyone can access it. This was a diorama set up at his hobby shop and he set up his photo in said hobby shop. And that's the primary reason why I included this in the top 20. The photo is pretty good, but I like that he kind of like took the rules and, and kind of found a way to work within them that's unique and different than what most people have done. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember, I remember when I when I saw this uh, this picture, I was like, "Nuclear Jake, you son of a bitch." <laughs> it, follow, it, it follows the the letter of the law, but not the spirit. But then I'm like, wait. When's the last time you saw a private hobby shop? Yeah, that's the spirit. That's exactly the spirit. And we and I remember we talked about that because you had mentioned uh -huh. me in the in the in the mod chat being like, hey, I'm not sure if Nuclear Drake's photo qualifies. Like, absolutely it does. This is what I wanted people to do. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's it's again a lot of fun. Um because you know, you, you took that 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 theme of taking it in a public place and took it to an extreme that we didn't see outside of this, um, yeah. you know, using using a, a shop or, or another wise uh, um, specialized uh, public place for your 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 photo. Exactly, and I think that 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 that, um, that uniqueness is really what kind of got into the top twenty. But let's talk about the photo a little bit. There's a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, and I think some of it is a little conflicting with the story it's trying to There's the story of the diorama that he's using, and then there's the story he is telling within the diorama, and they're not quite the same. Yeah, I can see that a little bit. I just, more than anything, I see that there's a lot going on with a lot of flat lighting. That is mm -hmm. the difficulty of working with indoor shots, just like outside, whenever you're working with, um, with you know, overcast skies and all that, you're dealing with your elements. And when you're in a shop, you're dealing with incandescent lights that are all overhead. It's gonna make a very flat image. It's, it's not a bad photo, but there's a lot of unused space here. This is yet another shot that I think would benefit by the angle being lower on the camera. I don't really care about the hills in the back. I love that there's a, you know, like, like paratrooping soldiers on top of the building dropping down from those wires. I love that there's the two suits there and the trains and everything. Let that dominate the shot. I don't care about all this extra stuff on the left-hand side. I don't care about the 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 stuff in the background that's all out of focus. Just let you, that be the focus and you would have an you, amazing shot here. You care about it enough because there's a Zaku back there. That's the only reason you care. Yeah, you can, but you can barely see it, you know? You can't really see right. it in the shot that well. Yeah. And I you could also put them like on top of the hill or hiding behind another building as Yeah. I think a tighter focus on the the RX seventy eight would have would have helped a lot. Um because we're trying to focus on basically three different elements. Um, you know, the background and then the, the two mobile suits. Um it really does sort of um hinder what I should be focusing my eyes on. Um, yep. There's not a single subject that I can really focus on to compose a photograph around. I think focusing entirely on the uh, uh, the RX-78, you know, um, maybe getting the, uh, the, the Zaku 2 sniper in the background uh, off to, you know, one of the, the um, other side thirds, um, that would have really helped. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it, there's a lot of things that could have been done uh, to really help this this photo. But other than that, I just I really enjoy um, the extreme that you took with with taking this photo in the public place and using what you had available with this this diorama. Totally. And you guys might remember from some of the streams that I've run when I've done photo seminars and talked about other people's pictures is I talk a lot about leading lines. Like I know I talk about that in my composition video. I think I talk about them in the posing video as well, the two posing videos I've done. And leading lines, I feel like, again, if you're not familiar with the concept, it's basically things in a photo that are in a straight line that lead your eye to other things in the photo. I think that if we, if we brought this photo down if we brought the camera down a little bit and then a little bit over to the right to make the the um, the, 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 the the granddad words are hard. Oh, my goodness. The the granddad kind of like the uh, the focus of the shot. 
what you would have there is that the train set that's in front of the gym over on the left hand side then becomes a leading line in and of itself. It'd be leading in from the bottom left hand corner of the photo into the background where it's a little bit out of focus. Your eye will still be following it because it is out of focus, gets gradually more out of focus. And then you will see that gym a lot more, like your eye will be drawn to it. The subject then becomes the RX-78 peeking around the building. And then you have that, the um, the extra kit there in the background that's, that your eye is drawn to by those leading lines being the bright yellow trains that are sitting down there in the bottom. But still, I love the concept of this. I think that we had a really cool shot here and I love that you kind of circumvented those those rules a little bit so thank you you did a great job you should be very proud with your shot is that not a granddad or am i am i, am I crazy that's a granddad okay thank you i think it's we got, people, so, we got people talking in the in the chat like it's not like hold up a second i'm totally sure it is <laughs> also one thing about the granddad and where's it look it's not looking at the zaku up on the hill where it probably should be it's staring down yeah. at the pavement right that's it's fair. probably it's searching for the Zaku because uh, you know it can't it can't find it yet. There's a but story the, to be told here. But mm -hmm. the gym already sees the gym just sees it the train building whatever the hell it's called. I don't know. Well, here's the thing. Though. I mean, here's, okay. the thing though. here's the thing. Here's the thing. By by setting the camera where I just talked about, then you have that building in the center. You have the granddad in the center. You then have the, the gym in the back over on the left, and then really tiny in the top right hand corner, you'll still see that Zaku. That still tells the same story, but it conveys it in a lot more different ways because your eye is naturally looking around the frame to figure out what's he looking at. We obviously have the gym in the back. He can see something. What's he looking, what's the granddad looking for? And then eventually your eye is gonna find that Zaku, that, which then sits on the right hand side of that building up at the top right hand corner glorious glorious shot that would have been but this is still a very good one i don't want to discount this shot because it's still very very solid i think you did a great job there nuclear drake well done well done you be proud? Also, nuclear drake also has a great point uh because the kit that he used was the high grade granddad revive and the head doesn't really angle uh up all that well so that's fair what about sideways you could still turn it more yeah i think so so, my biggest thing, it's neither a complaint nor a compliment about this image, is the use of the lens flare effect in the top right corner. This is right. shot behind glass. This is definitely shot behind glass. But it yeah. wasn't. And I yeah, only know so that because I've seen the unedited version. Oh, really? Yeah, yes, he edited with this cram shot. Oh, interesting. Okay. That lighting effect was used to block out some hobby shop background mm. to decent okay. effect. Yeah, That's you fair. can just barely see it near like the bottom of the hill over that bridge. I honestly didn't notice it that much. Like, I thought that was just a shot behind glass, and it didn't really bother me too too much. So yeah, I mean if that that's that's a fair critique, I think. Yeah. But that's a, that's a good that use out. of editing, though. That's a good yeah. use of editing. To have to point it out and not see it right away, that's that's actually really good. That's that's a great way to use editing in these kind of shots. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. If, he, if, if Jesse hadn't pointed it out, I would have never noticed. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Koizu, good luck to all entrants. I didn't enter this time for multiple reasons, but can't wait to rewatch in the morning and check out everyone's pictures. This will be up on YouTube tomorrow. Um, just there's a 24 hour wait period between streaming and um, and uh, putting it up <laughs> elsewhere. So, but it will be up yeah. online. We will we will have it up on there. All right. Which which keeping the uh, uh, keeping up with the tally. There's three kits, but only two and a half feet visible. Well, that's true. But to compensate, we do have the two feet of the soldier up there par paratrooping down from the line. So, uh, yeah, you're right. Good point. Good yeah. point. Three and a half out. out of three feet. <laughs> All right. Our next one comes from Random GL, one of the few night shots that we received this time around. What do you guys think about this one? So, good on you to go for the night shot. It's definitely a more difficult shot to get right due to a whole Again, bunch of water, issues. Right go ahead and talk. I'll be right back. But I can't say I'm a fan of the glowing effects. Yeah, that he, come from the, come with the territory. He edited them later in editing, right? 
at least for the eye camera there. I mean, it it, do, it does look like uh, it is a uh, an edit uh, made to uh, to light up the uh, the mono eye. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it, it kind of looks like it's it's uh, it's almost a, a, a copied um, version of the uh, the street lamp flare on the uh, on the left hand side. Um, he just cropped uh, that that um, lens flare uh, eye flash sort of thing from the from the street lamp on the left hand side, and then just moved a copy of it over on top of the mono eye and, and painted it green. So one of the things I don't quite understand is what is the Zazabi pointing at over off to like, he's pointing with his left arm, I suppose, but like we just see a no parking sign. Well yeah, he's a parking enforcement officer. <laughs> he wants to make sure that the Astria Health Center people going to the Astria Health Center are parking appropriately. That is handicapped parking. You don't have the appropriate <laughs> tag for that. We're going to need you to move. Yeah, but he's standing on some rocks. Like, is he right next to a river? Is he directing boats around? Have, have you not been to a parking lot before, Nelson? Sometimes there's gravel. <laughs> yeah, but, like, we're way out past the edge of the parking lot. You don't know. Now, see, every health center has gravel outside of it, primarily because it's a test, right? Like, if you leave a health center, you might have some broken bones. You might have a sprain. We need to make sure that you can traverse rough terrain before we'll send you home. If you trip and you fall, you got to go right back to the health center. That's how they make additional money, because you have to check in a second time. But if you feel that you're confident to cross those rocks and go home, then you can be discharged knowing that you can handle yourself in the real world. So that's really a safety feature. That's what we're highlighting here is a safety feature. Um, But I like like the idea of the lens flare. I think it's a little strong. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a little too much, but I do really like the lighting here. We're, we're again using artificial lighting on this one, probably like a street lamp or something like that that's shining in from the top right of this photo. But mm-hmm. it makes for some really nice glare on those on those corners and those curves of this kit because it is a very curvous, curvaceous kit. I think that, mm-hmm. that that lighting actually worked really really well on this one. Yeah, and yeah, I think uh, which uh, which has a good uh, point. Uh, there there seems to be an issue with the. Uh, the focusing on the on the image there doesn't seem to be uh anything that is in focus that's uh, not because of the focus that's because of it being low light so yeah this, this kind of goes back Everything. again to it being if it's there's not enough light there's not enough basically on digital camera light equals data right there's not enough data for it to process a mm-hmm. in focus shot in this case so yeah. when you're shooting in this kind of a environment you want to shoot that with a longer exposure so that mm-hmm. the camera can get enough light to generate a sharp photo. So that's something to keep in mind if you're shooting a shot like this. Yeah. So it, it, it makes it sort of fuzzy, sort of soft. Um, and, and uh, it, yeah, it really could have benefited from, you know, longer exposure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's definitely not a bad photo by any means. It, mm-hmm. it is a... Uh, um, you know, good use of night, and it, it's it's one of the only entries that I saw. Uh, one of the few entries that I saw that were that they um, took it at night. So, you know, major props for doing that. Um, <laughs> which again, pointing out both theater are uh, are visible. Yep. Uh, so, congratulations to Random GL. Ten out of um, ten, photo of the year. Here we go. Yep. Oh, yeah, I mean, which I didn't say this was the only one. I said this was one of the only. Yeah, there's a few night shots in the top 20. Like, this is, like, yeah. number six or something like that. Like, there's there's plenty more photos. There are some other ones that include night shots. I think it's time to move on to the next one. What do you guys think? Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a plan. This one was not shot during the nighttime, but this one was shot by Krishal. And I, I dig the, the simple pose on this one, and I like the use of the background being out of focus. What do you guys think on this one? This is, I think this is the first one that we, we've seen that is using the Astray Red Frame. Um, so, <laughs> My baby boy! <laughs> you know. Um, 
A uh, couple things uh, again, uh, going back to a lot of the uh, the um, points that we've already made. I think a lower angle uh, probably would have worked on this, or at least maybe a different angle, because I'm seeing either a transformer box or a dumpster, and dumpster. it's kind of it's kind of throwing me off. <laughs> yeah, transformer box, my mistake. Yeah, um, and also the tip of the sword is cropped off. Yeah, yeah. Come on, that's you a big part. Me- you got to give me the whole length of the sword. If we're playing around with a straight red frame, you got to you got to give me that sweet sweet katana shot, man. Yeah. We we've got the katana and then we've got the katana holder. Yeah. So I primarily picked this one as part of the top 20 because of its use of le- of um of a canted angle, which is not something mm-hmm. that you normally see in these kind of shots. Um, a canted angle for those of you that don't know like normally your shots are kind of shot head on with your fo- with your subject being just either perpendicular up and down to the ground or parallel side to side when you shoot at a canted angle it basically is shooting it at a bit of a diagonal and you'll notice that the, the ground he's standing on is in a very extreme diagonal from the bottom left up to the mid right here mm-hmm. and that puts the, the subject at a bit of an angle as well a canted angle adds to things such as confusion um, it adds to things such as um, like taking you as the audience out of balance, um, which can work really well, especially for villain shots. Um, probably most infamously, the film Battlefield Earth almost was shot exclusively at a canted angle. But some good uses of that. Um, a lot of Quentin Tarantino movies use canted angles for benefit of, of making the audience feel kind of out of place and disoriented and I like the that that frankly not a lot of people use canted angles so I like that this one used that whether it be mm-hmm. intentional or not now there's not a lot interesting going on in the background they're just not so that is something to keep in mind you got a dumpster in the background you got what looks like a parking lot some trees a, a, um, a partition of some kind it's mm, there's not much going on in the back it's, it's just not so what I might have used here is a more shallow depth of field. And the way that you could have pulled that off is by getting super, super close to the kit and just focusing on the kit itself. That would have made the background even more blurred out, thus giving a lot more focus to just that kit. I wouldn't even see that dumpster in the background or the trees at that point. But you'd still see the separation with the canted angle, which would just give it a little bit of disorientation. And and like mm-hmm. Stroud mentioned, you want to have the whole katana in there. That's the big selling point of this kit. That's the big selling point of your pose. He's holding a katana. Don't cut off the top where a lot of the damage is going to be coming from. Yeah. But I think this is a very creative use of that canted angle, like you said. And uh, both feet are in, so congratulations, Chris All. <laughs> Again, two number one winners. Um, in, two... This, in the last 10 minutes, yeah. I know. How right? are we going to decide? This... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, there's a different angle to minimize the bottom left, says which, you know, by having the, the shot closer, that would make the shot more wide angle. It would give it kind of more of a fisheye effect that you wouldn't really perceive unless you were looking at the original as well. So by by doing that, the the katana would fill the the frame a lot better, but also the the top, like the torso of that that kit would fit the frame a lot better because it would just kind of be like protruding a little bit closer towards the camera. Because if you ever look at a camera, it's a little bit bulbous, like it's almost like a, a semicircle. It's not like a flat, a flat tool. Right. So when you're closer to your subject, it kind of bends that subject a little bit and would actually make that protrude a lot better and give you a better sense of depth to the image um and that would probably break up the um the negative space on the left hand side because you have the entire katana in the shot at that point so yeah there is some negative space which your eyes drawn to which means that it's drawn towards the dumpster which is kind of unfortunate but there are simple ways to improve that so it's still a very good shot and good choice on the canted angle there chris well done well done good choice on the astray red frame it is an amazing kit i think this is the uh this is the master grade is it not uh, it, yeah, it looks like, uh, um, I think it might be the Master Grade, uh, the P Bandai one. See, uh, I don't recognize those stickers on any of the strays that I have. Yeah, because it, it doesn't have the, um, uh, it's not the Red Frame Kai because it's missing the two swords and the, uh, um, hmm. uh, the, the big one on the back. So I think it's just the, the stray Red Frame, the P Bandai one. Or it, it could though. be third-party marking decal. Also that, accurate. 
yeah, you know, it could be any number of kits, but it's it's a master grade from what I can tell. Certainly. Good stuff, though. Chris Shaw, well done. Be proud. Certainly has the master grade three one finger split going on. Yeah. Yep. Just like the uh, the real grade has. I hate those hands. I hate those hands. I was talking about that during the, the last stream on Wednesday. I hate those like those three one <laughs> split hands. They have no grip whatsoever. They're so bad. Yeah. But this is not a build contest. This is a photo contest. Big difference. Yeah. And so. Mm hmm. So, well, I thought that was a good transition point to the next. Pick. I think so as well. And this one is Witch's Long Exposure Night Shot. Do we want to talk about this one a little bit? No. Yeah. No, not at all. No. <laughs> so I'll start then. This <laughs> is an extremely difficult shot to get in the grand scheme of things, especially with a phone. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing. Stars do not show up on mobile devices because they are extremely tiny cameras, which means in order to get anything like stars or planets in your background, like from from a clear sky at night, takes an extremely long exposure. Um, there are a lot of third party apps that will do that for you, like my app ProCam will do that for you. Um, ProShot, it's another one. Uh, Visco, they all have controls for exposure and that's the only way that this could have even appeared the way that it does um <clears throat> excuse me because the light is still extremely low the photo is fairly flat but i picked this one more as a technological achievement than anything else because this is something that you can do on a phone camera mm -hmm. okay this was taken on the phone that you have in your pocket with this was, clear stars in the back well they're out of focus but that's because it's you know in the sky in the universe yeah they're how many <laughs> millions of miles away right like but the fact that they're even in the shot is actually kind of amazing when you think about it yeah absolutely this is arguably the most ambitious mm -hmm. uh, photo that was that was submitted uh during the uh the contest and, that, and you get you have to give which a lot of credit uh, for this photo, um, it, he could have very easily just, you know, taken a photo of his kit, you know, standing on the ground and 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 uh, uh, pointed his camera at the sky and and taken a picture with some some dim dim stars and a and a, and a flat background. But instead, he went with the long exposure. He went with the creative uh, angle of 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 putting his kit on a stand and then turning that stand basically upside down to make it look like it's falling through the yeah. atmosphere towards earth. It's got some slight battle damage on it to make it look like it, you know, Camille just got his ass kicked. Which, and, uh, which brings me to my main gripe with the photo. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, long exposure It's going to be soft. Like that's, that's to be expected. But take a look at the leg that's on kit right. That would be like on the left-hand side of the photo. That leg becomes a leading line directly into the stand. It emphasizes yeah. almost the stand. It Like it's like stands kill these kind of shots because it's so obvious to see them. Yeah. And, and have them almost kind of be in the way of the shot. Yeah. Right? And it's, it's unfortunate because there's there's really no other way he could have pulled off this shot. Yeah, um, I mean, without fish the stand. Line. Fishing well, line, yeah, but actually, I disagree. I disagree. Shoot this later with less light and a longer exposure. Yeah, because if this was shot at like two in the morning, for example, when there's absolutely no light in the sky, that sky would still be jet black. You would just see the stars, and then you wouldn't see the the stand. Mm -hmm. With it being kind of this dark blue, that tells me this is probably shot like an hour after sunset where there's still a little bit of light that your eye isn't going to see. But when you shoot at long exposure yes. and it's constantly gathering light from everywhere that it can, it's going to see that little last bit of sunlight that's out there and yeah. thus makes that makes that stand stick out like a sore thumb, which which is just more emphasized by the fact that you have that leading line from the leg drawing directly in 
to that stand. And so, which is saying this was off, shot around midnight. Okay, so yeah, I would have gone even later. That, to go off of that, if I remember correctly, which took this photo out in the snow. So mm -hmm. correct. The snow is also going to be bouncing whatever light it can. And true. that overall yeah. creates a brighter shot than you would normally get that time of night. Which actually can work pretty well for diffusion. Um, like that's something that a lot of people don't think about when you're shooting out of nature, especially at night, is that the snow, just like you mentioned, does bounce a lot of light. Um, because it's it's basically a, a natural white deflector. If you go to a, a camera shop and you ask for a deflector, they're basically just shiny white sheets. And that's what snow is. So by shining moonlight basically back onto the kit, I think that's actually why a lot of the light is predominantly on the bottom of this shot because it's bouncing off of that snow. Mm -hmm. And that can make for a really cool effect that wouldn't affect the sky all that much though because that's still light yeah. coming directly from the sky. So that could either be from the moon or the remnants of the sun. I would have turned the shot a little bit so that you're not getting as much of that light, whether it be the moon in the sky where it was positioned or what. That's really my only gripe with this, though. I mean, that's kind of nitpicking a little bit. The the framing is kind of weird, but at the same time, like when you have a when you have a mobile suit that's falling through the atmosphere, like it's going to kind of look weird regardless. Like I can't really think of a way off the top of my head to make this immediately better by you know, changing the composition. You know. You know what? What I would have really liked to have seen, and this is this is going to be a, a very subjective criticism. Um, I would have liked to have seen. A less, a, a, a less tighter focus on it. I would have loved to have seen maybe okay. more negative space. You know, I think that's fair. Kit, yeah, yeah. Kit that put it down in in like the lower third. You know, give me a lot of that night sky, so it makes it look like it is you know towards the 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 nadir of its of its arc into the atmosphere. Give you know, me... that's that's a great point. You know, like just have more of that sky. It's clearly falling through the sky. And by pulling back a little bit, you can get more of that sky. And if you notice in the t in the uh, like left hand side of this shot, the shot does get darker. So mm -hmm. like a lot of that's going to be vignetting from the from the photo or through post processing, depending on how you do it. But if you can get some more of that sky and emphasize those darker areas, this actually might have been a really good minimalistic shot by doing that. Plus, you get more stars, which is also really nice. So that, that's actually, I think, is a really good point. Um, you would probably want to still keep the kit on like the lower part of the vertical, so having it towards the bottom of the photo. But yeah, yeah that's definitely an option. Like I, I think I, I would, I would compose this photo where you know, imagine that this you've got an image and it's separated, you know, into a grid of of, of nine. I would have liked to have seen it in the ninth square, you know, lower. Uh, yeah. right hand corner of the 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 photo you've got you know so so much uh negative space with the sky and the stars and the the gundam just falling out of the sky definitely i think that would have been a pretty good shot yeah. As a fan, it's still not a that this isn't shot. yeah not that this isn't this is still a, i mean you're in the top 20 it's obviously a damn good shot <laughs> you know, like, don't, like, we're going to criticize, obviously, because we love photography and we love Gunpla, especially me. So, like, don't take any of our criticisms as, like, you failed your shot if you make it in the top 20. We criticize because we want to talk about them. We want people to improve. Like, if you have a shot in this, you still have a really cool shot and you should be Absolutely. very proud of it. You should be very proud. So, yeah, which you did awesome. Keep up the good work. I can't wait to see what you do in the Plamo Photography channel on the Discord. Shameless plug. Definitely yeah, and which is out. saying that it, it wound up being a pretty massive photo. So, uh, yeah, if you could give us some more crops, um, you know, take what I said. You know, just if, if you can, give me a give me a crop where the, the, the kid is just, you know, at the bottom of the picture and give me a lot more of that negative space uh, towards the top. I think uh, um, I think it's going to wind up being an awesome picture. Totally. Totally, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and, and that yeah. Space that's what is saying. big, empty, and lonely, and I would have loved to have gotten that. Yeah, picture. yeah, exactly, exactly. But, but yeah, I, I love the fact that we have stars that are clear, and you can tell us what they are in a cell phone shot. Like that's yeah. what this contest is all about. That is so and dope. I love it. Arguably so the most ambitious picture taken, and that oh, yeah. alone, that alone is worth another high res a straight red frame that's three of them three. <laughs> that, that you're financing that you're paying for 
And you're going to give out to everyone in the top 20. Anyway, our next <laughs> our next shot comes from Space Core, and I am hype as hell for this shot. I adore this shot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this was one of the first ones that like, we got like, okay, this dude knows what's up. This is fantastic. And yes, mm -hmm. we have the grass issue again here where you have the larger grass messing with the you scale. Know? For this one, though, it doesn't matter. For this one, it does not matter. This one, matter. it's not almost as bad because it almost looks to me like some sort of reeds or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's the point not that I was going like to make. That's the most... <laughs> God damn it. All right, take uh, it up. Ultimare 3 ruined it. Wait, what? What did he do? <laughs> Crab. The, mo the sun is Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah, I see it. Yeah. Now right. we'll never uh, unsee that. Sorry, that Space Core. Yeah, it was Space a good Corps, photo. You may remove from the top 20. We're going to go back to talking about Witch's photo again. <laughs> <laughs> now we're, we're not like, this is, this one, you use depth so well. You have leading lines with the dry with the dry land leading out to the lake, which is where the Zagok is coming from. It's intimidating. The poses are awesome. You're using your framing amazingly. I love this fucking shot. I don't care that I just use the F word on my stream. All ages don't <laughs> care. This shot is awesome and I adore it. Yeah. Um, I, I absolutely love the uh, the the posing uh, in this photo. Uh, if you if you look closely, you can see that uh, the Zagok had stole uh, the Gundam's uh, the beam rifle. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. It's it's a very imposing photo. Oh, that's photo. great. Also, oh, the hand is still on the rifle, isn't? It? Yeah, it looks I think like it is. It. I think it is. Yeah. You notice, yeah, the 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 right hand is missing uh, on the uh, on the on the kit. Yeah, um, Altamir again pointing out. Uh, besides the fact that the sun is Pac Man, um, <laughs> you've appropriately shuffled uh, elements of the environment around. Um, you know, with with the uh, the leg kicking up sand as it's dragging itself backwards, the shield planted in the ground because it was it was either lost or tossed to the side. It's it's a very imposing photo, and it, I, I I I am loving the composition of this photo. Yeah, the only thing so much that on. I yeah, the only thing that I think I would have really changed is. Again, maybe a lower angle, so that way the Zagok looks more imposing. It is still imposing, but there is, I would consider a little bit too much space between the subjects. And by- it doesn't look big. Enough. Yeah, by, by pulling in the angle, um, uh, by pulling in the photo, you could really, you know, put the, the, the granddad in focus and make the Zagok look really, really imposing. So the best way that I could think to do something like that actually wouldn't just be my by moving the camera, but also by using a third party lens. I actually yeah. think for the for the way that he put this, he did a really good job of it, because if you were just to move it down, then you're going to get a lot more of the sky that would mess up the lighting. If you were to move it to the left in the shot, then you would mess up the composition because you're going to have too much negative space on either side. So what I would have done here is I have a little lens kit that I got on Amazon for 50 bucks. I use this on my videos all the time and it comes with a wide angle lens. If you shoot this with a wide angle lens, it kind of does the same thing that I was talking about with one of the previous shots where it'll kind of make almost the, the, the subjects or the, the photo kind of bend a little bit so that the center of the photo is pushed towards the, the, the audience, essentially. So I would have used a wide angle lens and then brought it down a little bit because what you would actually do there is that you'd be putting the Zagok into this bright area where you have the lake in the sky and then, then that would be directly behind the Zagok. But at the same time, I also like that you have the lake and the sky clearly visible back there. So I could see your point about scale, but I almost feel like these are kind of like land animals at this point you know like i don't really mind them feeling kind of small and yeah. being part of this world like 
Obviously, we're taking pictures of scale models of walking tanks, and if you can make them big and imposing, that's awesome. But people that work with their surroundings in these cases, you gotta remember, you're around full-size trees, you're around full-size lakes yeah. and sky and everything. So you gotta use that to your advantage, and some of the best shots in this competition have been shots that have done that, and this is one of them. I, I just, I think that this is really good. The only thing that I would have done maybe a little bit differently is that those reeds that are in the front, on the bottom right-hand corner of the shot, are really in focus um mm -hmm. by getting the um i would say probably by getting the kits or not the kits but the um yeah i guess so the kits a little bit further back in the shot that then by moving the the camera a little bit closer would actually put those those reeds and the grass and everything out of focus a little bit so that our eye isn't immediately drawn to them that would be the only thing that would really change in this shot yeah and yeah it's, i think it's it's less about making the kits seem, you know, bigger and more like walking tanks, and more to the fact that, you know, the Zagak is clearly the the antagonist in this photo. So giving it a better sense of just just terror and, and making it a little bit larger and more imposing would have really drove home the idea that this Zagak is about to wreck your shit and has and already done so. Another way I feel it would have helped to tell that story is if there had been like more interaction with the ground per se, if it looked heavier. Like sure, the Gundam's kind of trying to get away and it's kind of pulled its leg back and it's moved some sand and its shield is buried in it. But like the body itself was like presumably flown, thrown back and yet it's barely impacting into the sand. Its right arm isn't pushing in as it's trying to stand up. Its right leg hasn't created a crater as it got knocked off. Like, I feel like there should be more weight to this battle to show the Zagok as more imposing. Mm -hmm. And these, are, I mean, to keep in mind for the audience, this is all nitpicks. Yeah, that's basically just what FYI. We're doing right now. Um, and I did have a question in there from Altamare were third party lenses and accessories authorized for this contest? Absolutely. As long as your phone or your tablet or whatever is your source of your photography, you can put whatever you want on it. Like, there are. Um, there's a bunch of different companies like um, this one that I have here is from a just a Chinese third party called SSKY. So sky with two S's. Um, it's just a little lens that clips right onto the front of the camera there that I just dropped. That's fine. Um, but Oops. Uh, Olo Clip makes another really good set. Um, there's a lot of really good lenses for mobile photography that make these things look just as good as Hollywood photos or Hollywood video even like just play around look around like this whole lens set comes with a wide angle lens fisheye telephoto and macro lens 50 bucks and it's universal um you can get it right on amazon it looks really nice comes with this nice little carrying case i can't recommend it enough i mean i use these in my videos all the time and it always looks really good so if you have the opportunity to do that there's nothing wrong with doing it yeah Finish shaving nubs off of some runner pieces after sliding on a building. Interesting. Fun, fun. All right, cool. So let's go on to the next one then. The next one comes from Dixie Normus, who I think is using one of the best utilizations of the HDR and color features on a phone in this competition. It looks so bright. It's so vibrant. Very vibrant. Second use of our of our fan favorite uh, red frame. Yep. Also, I like how you're noting the astray red frame, but we've seen so many revived grandpas in this contest as well, especially yeah. in the top. True. Well, the revived Very grandpa true. isn't isn't a fan favorite. The astray red frame is. Well. Speaking of the astray red frame, one of the things I like is that the grass is kind of out of focus at the front, so it looks like you're really looking up at yep. the astray for this pick. We've yeah. been also, harping on sense all the of scale. This does it to a T. Also, there's all the empty space in the sky in the background just behind most. So yeah. the only thing to look at is the astray itself. Yeah. Well, so this looks to me like they built a one-to-one -one scale astray red frame and stuck it in a field. I mean, they did about as best as they could. That's the perfect grade uh, astray red frame. So that yeah. helps with the sense of scale because true, it's you huge. Know, <laughs> when, when you the have the bigger the kit, the better angles you can get reasonably. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. So you know that's that's a good way to show off the uh, the amount of money that you have 
you you know you don't, <laughs> he, this man does not need a, a, a free high res a straight red frame wow he's just gonna buy his own <laughs> well so. what i wanted to show off with this one though is that this uses what's called hdr very mm -hmm. clearly in this shot notice the sky notice that the sky is perfectly clear it's in the middle of the day but nothing feels overexposed it's extremely easy for a photo to be blown out in the whites and especially in the sky on these kind of shots because there's just so much information being shoved into this little tiny camera. Like I talked about before, light equals data. So the more data being shoved in here, it can overload things and blow out your image. In this case, what it's doing with HDR is it's taking three photos and stitching together the most, um, the most uh, perfectly exposed parts of those photos, basically the best way to describe it. That's how you can get a sky that needs a lower exposure to have that kind of vibrancy. That's how you get the like the the white joints and the white armor that's on this thing to not be super exposed because it's using again a lower aperture. But you still have a ton of detail in the trees for example in the background which are using a higher exposure. That's why the HDR settings on your phones and on your tablets exist so that you can do these kind of effects. I think that's a great use of that effect what would we do differently about this shot though i like i really really like this one what do you guys think so clearly the focus of this picture is the hand about to grab the handle of the katana here but i feel because of how it's set up there's a lot of empty space over on the left uh should it be more focused on the kit itself not nearly so much the empty space what i would have maybe done here composition wise is use a different what's called aspect ratio yeah. So this aspect ratio is what's called four by three. It's very similar to what you would find on an old tube TV. If, you've ever, if you're young enough to remember those, which I know some people that are watching <laughs> right now probably aren't. Um, but this is like the like the standard def framing, basically. By having yeah. this widescreen and having more negative space, I think it would look even better because we're looking off into the distance trying to find this thing's opponent. Right. Yeah. Like look at the subtleness in the pose on this one. Like you mentioned, we're grabbing onto the sheath. We have the hand not grabbing onto the sword, but it's kind of hovering over top of it, ready to pull it out and ready to strike. What is he striking? What is he looking for? By having this a little bit stretched out and having more negative space, we know clearly that there's something off camera that we can't see, but he clearly does. And I think that, that would work really, really well for this kind of shot by just having it a little bit more wide and mm -hmm. having more negative space there. Yeah, uh, I think that's that's the primary compositional change that I would make is more negative space because you know again we're 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 very clearly looking at a kit moving you know from from right to left so give us more left yeah <laughs> and even like simple things like if i i'm gonna try to draw on this real quick actually which i don't typically <clears throat> do but i'm going to show you something on this take a look at the tree line where it's those dark trees in the back there mm -hmm. you have these dark trees that are all kind of skidding across like this right then you have, I don't know why that, like, <laughs> this thing showed up. Let me delete this real quick. <laughs> so you have those lines, or you have those trees that are kind of swooping up mm -hmm. towards the middle of the shot there on the right, right? You also have the sheath and the sword following that exact same line. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. And not just that, you also have the eye line. See where the visor is? See where the V-fin is? It is following that exact same line. This is composition to a T, folks. You have the head, you have the weapon, you have the background, the foreground, everything is following the same planes, those same leading lines. Beautiful stuff, I adore this composition, I adore the pose. It's not like a super elaborate pose either, but it's it's enough to be interesting. It's not over the top, it's simple, and it does an effective job for showing off some really cool stuff in your shot. So awesome, awesome, awesome job, Dixie Normus. You should be extremely proud of this shot. I love it. I, I absolutely love everything about this. Absolutely. 
cool. Let me turn off all my extra stuff here. I forgot that I had the markup function. Like, I should be using that more <laughs> during this stream. <laughs> cool. Um, I'll try to change the color if I can, uh, maybe next time for the next shot, which comes to us oop, dip, dip, from Make Gunpla. Hey. This is fun. This is, hey, this is again, wonderful. Another photo that is just so much fun. It's so great. It <laughs> I love oh. force perspective and this <laughs> is perfect. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's it's great. I mean like just the it's I mean you can clearly see his force perspective and remember we have the screenshots to show this was taken on a phone and it doesn't line up perfectly but in this shot it does. Yeah. Like you can see that like you have the a little bit of that stand sticking underneath there if I move this his his uh name there a little bit. You could see yeah, that the move, move the name out. because people were were struggling to see it which, you know, yeah, there's no I, Photoshop shenanigans here. There might be in the in the in the uh, mono eye up there. I don't know if that's an LED or not, but yeah, this is not Photoshop. Like this is just how this photo looks. Like I'll try to pull up if I can the screenshot of this and it's it's incredible. I'm going to be honest, I think that might be an LED because this looks bigger than a high grade. It might be. And I think yeah. I think McGumpla is in the chat actually. He might be able to answer that. Yeah. Let me try to find the screenshot real quick. Yeah, it's it's he an LED. It's an LED. It's an LED. Okay, that, that's no. that's kind of what I thought. I just wanted to confirm. I didn't want to assume yeah <laughs> but yeah this is this is a cool shot man like this you knocked it, it out of the park on this one here just, I'll, again go, going back to the the you guys remember a couple of photos ago when we looked at that that pop guy uh just having a lot of fun or maybe not staring at a bunch of people creepily in his overcoat what are you what? guys remembering that photo differently than me yeah bro uh-huh. <laughs> maybe. Definitely maybe. maybe. God, I just <laughs> Like here, oh, I'm gonna man. I'm gonna show you guys the the other version of this real quick if I can. Let me let me see if I can pull it up here. Um I don't wanna mess up the, the order. Crap. What happens if I do this? Is that gonna mess everything up? No, that didn't that didn't pull it up. But um, well, uh, you can always just pull it off the uh, spreadsheet that we have. Oh, well, I have it. I'm just trying to make a display on the on the stream is all. Oh, all right. Like I might be able to do it this way here. Like this is uh, do, do, do. we'll do window capture. Bear with me just a moment, folks. Like I want to show you guys that there, there is no chicanery on this. I think it's very important. Here it is. So here's the original shot. And you can see, hi baby. You can see that it's literally just an action base sitting on a table with some forced perspective and just lined up perfectly. It's great. It's fantastic. I love it. Like just like the fact that you were able to get this focus and the background in focus is a great use of that depth of field stuff we've been talking about this entire stream. You, you did an awesome job with that, and it's it's very fun. Yeah, is there a lot of negative space around the top? Yeah. I don't really care about this blown out exposure in the background here on the top right hand corner, but I don't care. I, I just I love that this all feels like it's almost like a very casual like a like a casual shot that you might take with your friends out at dinner on one night. It just your friends happen to be plastic model kits, which is accurate for I think all of us, really, when you think about it. I mean, I don't know about you. Oh, was that you cut out? I don't know about you, but you know, I have actual people I hang out. I mean, I have some. I have some. <laughs> well, look at you shawing off. I know. Oh man. Yeah, and if we have if we have to be like super nitpicky, yeah, it would have been nice if the feet were like more flat to the ground in this force perspective shot. That does kind of throw it off a little bit, but not enough for me not, to. Not, not enough right for me to be like pissed off. The left foot should maybe be a little bit flat. Yeah, yeah. maybe a little bit. Yeah, if, if we're being super nitpicky, but the my this is very unique, and I, and I, I just I think it's very playful, very fun. Yeah, it, it's 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 a fantastic photo. Again, um, another really ambitious photo to use force perspective like that, and it just works out so well. Um, 
my main complaint is that the screenshot didn't include the gym, so I'm going to assume that you uh, you. Oh no, he sent two. He sent two screenshots. I'm, I'm trying. Uh, I was trying to make a joke, but I couldn't think of any because the shot's so goddamn good. <laughs> now, he's got both in there. He's not disqualified. <laughs> if that <sighs> if that is indeed a joke, that is it wasn't. But yeah, I mean this this is. This is a really great photo. Uh, I, I love everything about it. Yeah, no, it's cool. Like, again, it could have been a little less exposed in the back, but with it being as playful as it is, I, I have very little problem yeah. with that. So, yeah, great, great work. McGunpla, you should be extremely proud of this one. I, I adore Absolutely. this. Absolutely. I adore Absolutely. this. All right. On to the next one. This one comes from Venomous Lizard, and this is an interesting one. We've got, we got, we've been talking about grass a lot in this stream. This has an abundance of it. What do you guys think on this one? It's got a lot of grass. It's got a lot of grass, a lot of beachside grass. Yeah. I like the Wing Gundam's head way in close and out of focus while everyone is focusing instead on the double X and the wing fighting in the back. Also, the nice thing about the grass is it sort of hides the stands. They sort of blend. In. It does. Yeah, it, it, it mm -hmm. sort of helps to blend uh, blend out the stands. Um, I, I'm I'm a pretty big fan of the composition of this photo. Um, I think there there is kind of a, a bit of a problem with the the two subjects. Maybe just it, it's kind I of difficult to tell what we're looking at. I, I think they get kind of uh, lost in each other a bit. Yeah. And and you lose any clear silhouette that you might have been able to recognize. Yeah. And I think while the grass does a great job of, of helping to hide the uh, the stands, it's also re doing a really great job of hiding the subjects. <laughs> and it's, it's kind mm -hmm. of, it's a bit busy. The time of day is also helping with that a bit, where like the grass is kind of bright in one part, the ocean's bright in the background, but a lot of the kits are in shadow, and like there's a bit of light on them, but it's not like they're not illuminated. Yeah. yeah, like I actually, if I were to take this shot again, I would make the focus on this just the Gundam head in the front. Like there's a lot of busy plastic in the background. And like you mentioned, a lot of the action base is actually masked by all of the detail that's in there of the grass. That'd be masked even more so if that was out of focus. I think yeah. the most interesting thing about this shot is the fact that we have a, a dead Gundam head on a beach. Correct. <laughs> you know, like we have the fight going on here, but really the, the aftermath is already being displayed. Let's focus on that. Let's mm -hmm. let's make that a little bit more of a of a focus on this shot. And again, I, I like the shot a lot. I actually like yeah. that this is darker than most of the background. That that gives it that sense of like this is a forgotten battle that no one really gives a damn about. Yeah. Like that is something that you can convey with this kind of dark foreground, bright background, like life goes on. We don't care about what you're doing, but I would have loved to have seen the main focus of this shot be the Gundam head instead of the kits. I can, I can understand why you did it that way, Venomous Lizard, if you're watching on the stream right now, but I think that that would have just made so much more sense. I'm gonna change this color real quick. Does that make it red? Yes, great. I would have loved for this to be where the focus area is because that, that would just give it so much more credence that that is what matters on this battlefield is that something is being attacked. Something is, like there's, there's a battle happening here, but I love the use of lighting and that's the main reason why I included it on the top 20. So still, great work, great, very, very good work. Very good. You, 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 you done did good there, bud. You know so, who else did good? Jason. Proto dude, thank you for the follow. Back when Venomous Lizard submitted this entry, uh -huh. he accidentally submitted two images. The other one had the head in focus, but the it was more towards the center of the photo. Oh, was it? I don't remember that. Okay. Interesting. I was not aware of that. Hmm. That that's a that's a big old funk right there. Indeed, it is. And Pufferger, wait, what? Pufferger, yeah, Pufferger. Thank you for the follow as well. <laughs> P 
P-U-H-F-R-U-G-E-R-T-E-R. Puffergerter. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow, my dude. High percentage of interesting shots in this tw top 20 I'm noticing. Six or, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of unique compositions, and I think that a lot of that came down to the restriction of it being in public. People had to get creative, and the people that did definitely did. Like, there's, there's definitely a lot of really good shots in this one, and, and I'm super proud of. Including the next one from Gurgle. Again, lots of use of, of you know background nature, and I think this one actually utilized it really well. We definitely got more of a jungle feel with this one than it just being like random reeds and grass and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And also calling into um, homage the uh, end cap of uh, uh, Gundam Double O with the. Sure. Uh, with a very battle damaged uh, double O, um, it 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 definitely it looks melted actually. Yeah, it might it be battle damage, but those safety flags are still. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that they are, and that they are. But this is not a build yeah. competition; it is a photo competition. Yeah, and I think that we it, use negative space pretty well here. Yeah. I also I, like I, how he cheated with the foot where he disconnected it from the ankle and you can see <laughs> like, all like that just like, yeah, and you can see it. Like, we got feet in the shot. 10 yeah, out of 10 the, photo of the this year. Is a photo, this is a photo contest, not an engineering contest. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, so I think composition wise, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, again, I think, um, I think this could have benefited from, Maybe even you know again a little bit more uh, negative space. Give me, give me, um, you know, we 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 want the double O in focus because it's clearly the thing that we should be focusing on. But it, it seems to be cropped just a little bit too tight for my tastes. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you know because it's it's sort of bleeding from one third into another. Maybe either you know uh, um, blow out the focus a little bit, put it in one third, and then give me you know, some more of that, that background, that jungle and, and, and really give me the sense that, you know, this, this is a, a mobile suit that has been abandoned for a really, really long time. Definitely. Definitely. Like show that this has been through some shit and the world has moved on. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what you can do again with that negative space. Like some of the best shots that we have utilize negative space extremely well. We've talked about a few already that have done it very well and this and this has a lot of that too like I, i'm not as worried about like the the foliage and everything being in the back because it is out of focus it feels like it's further away therefore it feels like it's more overgrowth than it is just random bushes and whatnot so that works well make sure if you're using nature in your shots to not have that be the focus have your kit always be the focus but you could still use that negative space to your advantage. So I think that you did a really good job here. Um, asking if this one is uh, another good use case for HDR. This one does not appear to be HDR related because there's a lot of low contrast on this one. Um, you can almost kind of see, like, especially in that front kneecap there. Like, I'll, I'll circle this well, again here. So what 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 Witch was saying is, would this have been another good use for HDR? Would it have benefited from some HDR? Um... I don't know. I don't, actually, I really don't think so because by using HDR on this, it may have made these darker areas like here on the sides a lot even darker still. Um, and and I'm sorry, it made them lighter, therefore making them a little bit more pronounced. And by mm -hmm. doing that, then this bright kit is no longer like the main focus of the shot. Everything is then fighting for attention in this kind of shot. So I really don't think this one actually would have benefited from HDR, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. If that's fair. My, my expert critique. That's fair. Is it? Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> I think we have, um, for those of you asking how far along we are, I believe you have one, two, three, four, five, this is 12. six, seven. This is 13. Yeah, this is 13. We have seven left. I think, if I can count. Counting is hard. Well, the next one that we have here I didn't miss one, did I? Yeah, gurgle. What's the next one? Our next one. Hey, switch. There we go. Is from Zaku Ghoul. And I think this one's extremely <laughs> unique. We're extremely talking about unique, unique shots. This is one of them. <laughs> I, I like this one. This one was fun. 
We've been talking about a sense of scale all night. This is the only shot that we got that played with that in the other direction. So many people this are like one mm -hmm. threw out the giant robot and made <laughs> tiny robots. Yeah, tiny robots and core fighters. Hold on real quick before we before we go too far. Uh, guys, the the photos that we're showing aren't being shown in like placement order that like, you know, we, we didn't start with with number 20 and are working up to the, the top three. We're showing all of them in chronological order. Thank you. And then mm -hmm. once once we're done showing the top 20, we'll debate and then reveal uh, third, second and first place. Yep, yep. These are merely all of the top 20. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, no once, no particular order here. Yeah, and once once judgment is done and the winners are announced, we will be opening up the entries tab to so that everyone can see all of the entries and uh, uh we'll we'll probably put an announcement out there um to show the top three in a more permanent place for a while. Mm-hmm. Continue. So, so yeah, this is a fun one. Mm. <laughs> it's a it's a nature Look shot. It's a frog trying to eat a core fighter. It's great. Like what else is there to be said? I know, it's, it's super fun. I know this isn't a build contest, but I love that goddamn frog. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Uh, very creative use of what I can only imagine is a what I can only believe is a Leo. It's, it's a Leo, yeah. This is also I I like that they took a beam saber effect part and literally bent that into a tongue. Uh yeah. Huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like you're working with scale models. There's nothing wrong with making them feel small here, yeah. you know? Like, again, like you mentioned, this is not a build contest, but just from a from a fun standpoint and from a photo standpoint, I think it's great. I mean, your, your eye is instantly drawn to the frog for multiple reasons. I'm going to go back to the leading lines thing. Check this out. If I'm if I'm looking at this photo immediately, the first thing I'm seeing is this bright green frog that's over here <laughs> just absolutely blown out in the image so much brighter than the background even that it's on and this is in general a very dark shot like look at how much darker this frog is compared to the core fighter that's sitting up here right totally different like it's it's just so much so much brighter and by using the tongue and using the stick that's down here that it's perched on we have two leading lines leading up to the core fighter which is which is what we're um, ultimately seeing that that frog is going for so mm -hmm. like this is a good like a well composed nature shot the yeah. only thing that i really don't like about it we got this big old chain link fence in the back which you I, know, could do, I could do without what if, but it doesn't bother me that if, much what if that were a zoo <laughs> we'll see and so like here's, the fence, and the fence is for the enclosure or something yeah here's my here's my thing about this you know because we've we've um We've gone on a bit about, uh, you know, a sense of scale where the subjects are ostensibly 20, 30, 40 foot tall robots. We don't have to worry about that in this particular uh, photograph, you know, because there, there's there's no telling what scale these things should be because it's not the, the elements are so fantastical that it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And plus, like. Yeah, the fence, it's its a little bit distracting if you think about it too much, but it also just feels like something that, you know, you just could have taken in your in your backyard because you live out in the Amazon or something. <laughs> or like in, you know, the the like the the Everglades or whatever, you know, like in yeah. the, like like Louisiana, Florida swamps or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I think taking this photo, the the elements of the photo are just so fantastical that it, it throws a lot of the uh, the previous critiques that we've had about other kits and 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 uh, other photos out the window because it's just it, it's again it's just such a fun photo mm -hmm. and it's not something I would have expected uh, in the contest. I agree. Like you guys are making it hard for this top three. Oh yeah, you Definitely guys are making it down. real hard for this top three. <laughs> Cool stuff, man. Like, I, and, and I think you guys hit on all the points that I was going to talk about. Like, there's not really much else that I can add. It's a, it's a fun nature shot that happens to be involving plastic robots. Like, that's, yeah. that's dope. That's fantastic. I, I love it. I love it. It's, a, it's, it's stupid fun. I love it. You know what else is stupid fun? What's stupid what? fun? Stupid, you know what else is stupid fun? What, is, what is stupid fun? This name that I'm going to try to pronounce. Oh, Puffrugerter Hazel Lover. 
You mean your latest, uh, one of your latest uh, uh, followers? On this? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Prefruger to Hazel Lover. Yeah, same guy. Yeah. Prefruger. I'm gonna try to spell this real quick, uh, but this is a very fun, fun shot. Very similar to one of the ones that won contest Gunpla one in the top three. Um, very playful little shot. I, I, I dig it. Kind of going like dad and his son going for a walk in the park. Cute stuff. Yeah. Cute stuff. <laughs> Shove it in text to speech. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, I like the shot. It it uh, and unfortunately it feels a little overexposed. Um, yeah. Probably doesn't help that you know it's it's on a um, bit of a, a, a white whitish uh, uh, asphalt, so it's probably reflecting a lot of that sunlight as well. And it looks like it was taken either you know cl pretty close to noon, so the sun is washing out a lot of uh, um, washing out a lot of color. And the uh, <laughs> do the thick feet count uh, as uh, as times two no no there's still <laughs> it's still just one foot per foot and unfortunately um you know the, it does suffer from a bit of a cropping issue because the uh, the the toe is clipped off on the uh, high grade um so it, it is uh, a bit unfortunate with the uh, with the cropping i think the uh, the subject should probably be a little bit more centered uh if not you know just give me a little bit more negative space on the Mm. on the left hand side just to frame it better um but otherwise i, I like the concept of the photo um you know a, a dad and his son you know going on a walk in a park you can talk to me or my son anytime yeah so i do want to correct you on one thing this Go isn't ahead. an overexposed shot but there is a lot of glare and i'm actually going to demonstrate this with my yeah. with my face cam real quick so if you take a look at my camera i'm going to move you here real fast you're going to see a big difference between the shot you just saw and right now. Like, you see how washed out the color is right now? That's because the light source is shining directly above my face cam. Okay? Yeah. And that's what you're seeing in this shot here from Hazel Lover. I'm just going to call you that from now on. It's a lot easier. But watch what happens when I put my hand above and in front of that camera. You see how that glare immediately goes away? Like, obviously, my hand's kind of in the shot right now, but that glare is completely gone. Move it back. And that glares right back. So this shot was clearly taken at high noon, right in, dead in the middle of the day with the sun right overhead. And because of that, you, you have this issue where the colors are kind of washed out. So when you're out shooting in the middle of the day, one of the things that you can do is just bring with you like a piece of cardboard or a opaque piece of paper of some kind that you can put over top of your camera just sitting over top of it a little bit and that'll cut down on that glare. If you've ever watched like any behind the scenes video of uh, people shooting movies or whatever, a lot of times you'll see them like with their cameras that have these little barn doors on the side of the lens, on the sides and on the top and bottom, that's cutting down on glare from those lights. So that'll reduce that effect that you see there. Like nothing's overexposed, but it kind of washes things out a little bit. Um, just yeah. a quick little tip that I think will really help you guys, when, especially when you're shooting with smaller cameras, because you can literally just like, take like a real great sticker sheet, put it over top of your camera and you mitigate all that glare. So just a, a little tip that you can have. Um, I, I, I just, again, very playful shot. I dig it. I like the idea behind it. There is a lot of negative space on the right hand side though. There's, there's a lot of extra stuff there that I don't really care about. I think this one would have benefited a lot more from either being more centered or even just having that glare cut down a little bit so that we're not like, so that everything isn't so washed out. We have a more of a focus. Yeah. One one of the other things I would have liked to see is more of a walking. Like here, they've just got their feet down, but like there should be a foot up in the air just a little bit like mid. -step. Yeah, that would have been yeah, helpful, I, too. Yeah, I think the posing could have could have used a little work. But again, you know, it's not much of a pose contest. It's a it's a it's a photography contest. But yeah, yeah the little touches would have would have uh, would have helped a lot. Well, we, we do grade uh, a little bit on posing as well. So, I mean, that definitely yeah. is, a, is a good point. Yeah. Nuclear Drake asking how Oversig is going. How how hey how's how's Oversig going? How's Oversig going? Sick. How's it going? Did you win? Yeah. Have you have you gotten all the loot boxes? No. So it's not going well. <laughs> there is no end to the loot box. Then play Smash with your friends. 
Anyway. Are you telling are you telling Sig to go smash your friends? I mean We will we will spam as, as long as there's consent. Anyway, um, <laughs> moving on. Uh, but so, great shot there. I really do dig it. I think it's still fun. I love how the two kits are looking at each other and the posing, posing with that is very solid. You did a good job. I still dig it. A couple yeah. little tweaks, and this thing would have been a measles balls. So, great work. Good work. Good, good work. Yeah. Good. Good. Good job. Great job, hamstray. I'm just going to let this one sit on the screen for a little bit. I, just, I want to see the reactions, if that's okay. You update the name while you're at it. I am. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. And for numerous reasons. The color palette is perfect. Black and blue and yellow and white matches with the background perfectly. You're utilizing frame within a frame and you can clearly see that you have the crashing waves in the background. You have this stone, which I think he said was some kind of salt ruins in his entry of some kind. Like that, like these all match up perfectly with the Atlas Gundam here in the front. The pose is great. The framing is on point. And there's no wasted space here. Everything about this is just framed so well that I care about the sky. I care about the ocean in the background. I care about this rocky plain. I want to know why he's here. What is he contemplating? What is he looking towards going in that in that parallel that again lines up almost perfectly with the with the um, with the upper of the of the um, rule of thirds here on the on the upper horizontal. I want to know what he's doing here. I adore this shot. There is nothing about this shot that pulls me out of the immersion of that as a giant robot. It is just the landscape is such that I could believe that that thing is to one to one scale. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, the exposure is great. Um, I don't think this one utilized HDR because there's a lot higher contrast than you normally find in HDR shots. But I think just from a, a pure photo standpoint, yeah, you, you nailed it. Zaku42 with the shot here. You, you, you freaking nailed it. I, I, I adore this in, in so many ways. It's really good. My only critique is that it's not in 32 by 9, so I can use it as a dual monitor wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like a wallpaper, man. Like this, 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 this looks so professional. Like you, you did an amazing job with this, yeah. And, and just it, everything it, following into that, into that frame within a frame with the blue sky off on the in the top left. It just, it looks great. And the fact that you did this all with an atlas, one of the f most finicky high grade kits in existence. It looks so cool. I love the atlas. Oh, it's so, great. so, so, so you atlas. say that. But, like, this is one of the marquee poses with the Atlas. Like, yeah. in the manga, there is a two-page thing where it is doing this, this pose exactly. Oh, man. Yeah, it, it's very referential. It's really good. Yeah, good lord. This is... Mm. I don't know what I'm else sorry. to say other than, like, even, like, even the, the angle of the shoulders. Like, let me let me show you this real quick. Like, you, <sighs> might, you might not have even, like, intended for this to happen, but, like, Look at the curve here in how this this frame with the ocean in the background kind of curves up like this. That's what I've been kind of focusing on this entire time. You have the rocks that kind of start on a more gradual slope like this. But then you even have like the shoulders that follow that same curve going up. You have a more extreme curve in these in the in like the big uh, skis that he has on the back. A more extreme curve going up in the same direction. You have his eyes following across on that on that upper parallel. You have like you you have the same thing down here again, just a little bit less of a curve down here on the bottom, and just like everything about it is from a composition standpoint leads to this frame within a frame, and that is how you utilize that in the background. You, you, it's perfect. Like even again, like look at the 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 angle of these skis, like just going straight down, just like this, right? That matches up with the angles that you have back here with this contrasting rock ruin in the back. Like that just that angle just lines up extremely well. And like you have like like even like these two rocks here, same line, just generally, gradually, as you follow the kit up, this all follows the same curve as you have here in the frame within a frame. That is how you utilize this kind of composition. I 
just we're hollering about the I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. I love it. I love this shot. Well it's done. so good. Well done. Son of a bitch. All right. Are we ready to move to the next one? Yeah. For, for the next I person has to follow we, that we, up. <laughs> we can't gush over this one forever. We've got to we move can't. on. I suppose. We can't. All right. What's the next one? I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> this one is still extremely fun. This one is also extremely fun. From uh, from it. from uh, Visanya. <laughs> Soccer. Oh man, the the soccer wing kit and the uh, and the build strike in the background there. This is another again fun shot that ignores the fact that these are giant robots. I love when people are playing with scale like this. I I, I also adore this shot. God, the, there there are so many fun shots in this in this contest in the top twenty. And again, going back to a couple of these these you know different fun shots, it's. It's just so refreshing to see people having fun with the, you, these photos. You yeah. know, not everything has to be super cool, super edgy, super badass. We could have just a couple of couple of Gundams out there playing soccer with a Haro. Yeah, <laughs> which is what we basically have here. Yeah, I think it's just a regular red ball, but like it's still really fun. It's it's. You know, we're, we're just having a good time, enjoying yeah. our time out and out and about. Like, this is unabashedly a toy shot, and there is nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it at all. Sport. Sport. Sport shot. Asterisk. Uh, I don't like the filter. No. It, 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 it's kind of giving it makes me it an dreary. Instagram. Yeah. It makes it dreary. Like, there's a lot of filters that you could use to make this more fun. Like, a more warm filter would have worked really well, I think. Because right now this just feels very cold and very dead for what should be an extremely fun shot. Yeah. So I would love to see this, uh, Visanya, if you're watching the stream, I'd love to see this sans filter. Because I think that this would have actually benefited a lot more from not having one. Now, yeah. I feel like that also would have, I, I feel like he might have done this so that the that the uh, sky wasn't overexposed. Which I can also understand because if this, like the raw shot I can almost guarantee you has a very overexposed sky. <clears throat> Excuse me, because you can even see that in the top in the top left there. You can even see how it's pretty. And it looks to be a very cloudy, overcast day, so it, it might be just a um, you know an issue where unfortunate circumstances forced yeah. him to take this photo on an inopportune moment. That's uh, what it feels like. That's what it feels yeah. like. Because it, it would have benefited so much better from you know it, it being a much brighter shot during you know a, a brighter time of day. And I even feel like these are poses that could have been pulled off without the stands. Yeah. Like the the I mean, stands are very obvious. Like, I get why they were used to make the posing a little bit easier, but they are very obvious. Well, I mean, on that pretty rough terrain, you know, it might be difficult to get that that one-legged nah, uh, pose going on. Well, sticky yeah. Tack. I mean, but sticky on tack. grass, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. For a couple seconds. All you needed is for, for a couple seconds. Like, it will but fall it over just, eventually, but any purchase is better than no purchase. Maybe, but yeah, I think the stands... Right. You know, well, <laughs> the stands are sort of taken away from it a bit. Um, you know, it... it um, I think yeah. it would have been worked better with like the black stands on an action base five, just because of the the way that the sky is is reflecting off of that clear, mm -hmm. and in this kind of environment that doesn't work as well. But yeah, I mean, just like the general again, the poses I think are really on point. That's a great that that is a soccer kick, like that is how an arm and and shoulders and the torso would be when you're kicking a soccer ball. Like you nailed that, and and that's actually a very difficult pose to pull off especially with what look like high grades in this sort of shot. Like that's, that is hard to pull off. So you should be very, very proud of that. Yeah. yeah. It might be a high grade and a real grade. I think. Uh, it kind of looks like it. The, it might the, be the two, the two tone sides, uh, the two tone front skirts, uh, lead me to believe that it's the uh, real grade. Also, I'm looking up at that shoulder and that's not the, the high grade nail strike. Well, build strike, build strike. Yeah. Well, they're the same mold. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> like I care about build fighter stuff, but yeah, I think um, this this is a, a very uh, very fun photo. And again, uh, you did really well um, with the uh, with the composition. Just again, a, a few tweaks 
uh, brighter time of day, uh, see if he can get these poses going without the uh, the stands. And this would have been a, an absolute fantastic. You done did good, Vasanya. You Hell done you done did yikes. real good. You did real good. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and move on to our next entry, which comes from Nova, the founder of the Unicorn Fan Club over on Discord with our with our Grimgird. And this is actually one that I think works out pretty well by having some glare. It almost feels more like mist than it does glare here. Yeah, the I ethereal. Uh, and in fact, I think the primary um, issue that I have is that you could he could have gone farther with it. Yeah. Um, because if I remember correctly, and again, I, I could be very wrong, um, didn't Nova get into the top 20 last time with that, um, uh, the the denial, I think it was? I think that he was in the top 20, but I can't remember what kid he had. Oh, man. He might Z. be in the chat, I don't know. Yeah. I can't remember what it was, and I don't know where my... I don't remember where I put that photo with the top 20, but yeah, I mean, so he's hanging out in the discord and I'm sending him questions about previous top. Oh, okay. Apparently he did not make it into the okay. first. So I'm, I'm oh, okay. thinking of someone else. Then. But yeah, I think, I think this could have gone. I think you could have gone more extreme with the, uh, with either the glare or, or what have you to give it with the fog effect. More, yeah. Yeah. That more ethereal uh, feel to it. It's cool though. Like I, I like that we're like stabbing into what's clearly like destroyed asphalt. Mm -hmm. Is what it looks like to me. You know, it, it gives it a very much a fire and brimstone sort of feel. I like the cool lighting. I think that that's that's was done in post, um, but I think that that was done in a really tasteful way where it's not like over the top. You're not losing any detail and things like the legs, and you still have like the little piping that's in the arms. Mm -hmm. Overall. It's great. Like I, I like I don't really even mind the uh, like the green lawn that we have in the background. I I think again like this is a the shot that would kind of benefit from a little bit lower of an angle so that we don't have that green lawn in the back. Like if this were to go straight from the gravel to the trees in the back, this would be golden because this you can even yeah. have a pretty overexposed sky and have it not take away from the photo because it has that ethereal sort of look to it. So I yeah. think that that, but yeah, I mean the the idea on this one is solid. I actually like it. I don't think this was intentional or not, but if you look at the bottom of the blade, you notice how the stone that it's stabbing into is actually more gold than the rest of them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was yeah. intentional, but, but if it was, you were a smart boy and you did good <laughs> with that with that idea. Yeah, you gotta you take advantage of even the most the happiest accidents. Yeah. That's oh, dude, Bob like. 50% of my videos when I put them out are happy accidents, like the best parts of them. They really also, are. Also, 100% of your community is a happy accident. You're right. Yeah. My my <laughs> entire community is a happy accident. Yeah. Oh, look at you. Hi. How are you? How are you feeling? Tired? You want to go back to bed? You want to give me keys? You want to play some Smash? She's going to play some Smash. Mm -hmm. Smash. Huh? Smash it, bro. It's JoJo reference. I don't, but I wanted to have a different waifu in the background. And also Joseph best waifu. <laughs> All right, but yeah, good stuff, Nova. You done did good. Congratulations on your top twenty. Really cool stuff, and I dig the pose on this one for what's very what's a very minimalistic kick. We have the the um, the re one hundred or not the re one hundred, but the one hundred scale uh, Grimgird here in the in the house as well. And it's it's an interesting kit. I mean, it's it's pretty bare bones, but it looks really good. Yeah, absolutely. Good choice. All right, I think only two more left, folks. Yeah. And one of those being Nova's, which I think is probably the best wartime shot that we received. No, there's there's still two more. I, do you mean this, is, home row? this is home row. Is that not what I said? You said, you Nova. said Nova. Home row is what I meant. Words are hard. It's been a long stream. It's been going <laughs> for over two hours. <laughs> yeah. So I love yeah, home this row. Good stuff, man. <laughs> Yeah, this picture is uh, real. Mm. We are utilizing scale in a different way here. Yeah. It's clear that these kits are larger than the soldiers, but they are not at the same scale. And only the most nitpicky of anime fans that show up on Gundam Plastic Model Kit Facebook groups would point that out to you. <laughs> I think that you actually pull this off really well. Like they're almost like Pat Labor scale. 
I feel like. They're like almost like like four or five times <laughs> larger than the soldiers, but it still pulls off the same effect. Yeah. Right? Like it still pulls off that same effect of, you know, we've got a battle going on. We're trying to organize our forces. We need to figure out what the hell we're going to do. And, yeah. and the color palette, I love. It's a matching color palette, not just in the kits itself and the kits and the uh, the soldiers and everything, but also the background as well. You have like this super blurry bokeh of dead grass in the front. You have these tumbleweeds. You have this dead dirt in the background and just a little tiny sprinkling of trees in the back. I think this is probably the best composed color palette that we have in this entire competition. I love, 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 love the, the drab and the desert kind of feel of this. I think you did awesome. Yeah, so to, so Home Row posted a picture of like from a different angle and apparently those men, those army men, come up to the knees of the Gumpla. Oh, really? Whew. Let's see that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Some more force perspective here, folks. Yeah. And then, again, you know, this this is what we're telling you guys when, you know, we're telling you to take photos from, from, a, from a lower angle. This is what happens. This is the result of taking things from a more from an angle that's lower to the ground. Exactly. And let me show you his photo real quick. Um, ignore the OBS studio logo on there, but I'm going to put up home rose setup photo on this so you guys can see it. I'm hollering about this photo. And there's there's the setup. You can see clearly we got the tripod there sitting on a little a little um piece of a uh, piece of wood there sitting on what yeah. looks like a fence lots of lots of you know just dead refuse in the back there a lot of just and, and, and just like again that works really well with the color scheme on these kits which is like a drab off white lots of browns lots of just like dark like drab hues from a yeah. color standpoint I think this is our best use of color in, in the entire yeah. competition I know I said that before but I, I, I genuinely believe that you, and you it, did awesome and- Everything it, here looks like it belongs here. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And if it wasn't, if it wasn't for this behind-the-scenes photo, it, I, you would have, I would have struggled to identify the fact that this was taken on a platform. Yeah. Because I mean, it, it's it's done so well to make it look like it was shot from the ground. Mm-hmm. And you know, again, this is this is what you hope to accomplish with that low angle. Uh, a photo like that and this is this is some of the things that you can do to help accomplish that low angle photo you don't necessarily you know need to start tunneling your phone into the ground just to make sure that your camera is at a low enough angle sometimes you just need a platform to elevate it higher off the ground and I think it's really important to note too, like there's no wasted space here. Like we, we talked a lot about negative space tonight. There's a little bit on the top left, but like there's, that's it. Like so much of this frame is in use and that negative space in the top is balanced out by the out of focus bokeh and the bottom. So that doesn't, that becomes a lot less of a problem. So yeah, just the, the composition on this is wonderful. The color palette's wonderful. The exposure is wonderful. The framing's wonderful. Just bueno, bueno all the way around. I really dig it. Mm-hmm. Wonder well how well, I wonder how well it would work having a mirror on the ground to get a lower angle than you could otherwise get. Hmm, like taking a, you'd have to have a really clean mirror in order to that make that work. I mean, like a lot of people forget like you can hold your camera on landscape in two different ways right like if i like the way that i have my camera right now on my phone like it's right now a little bit higher up so if i were to take a picture of a model kit it would look a lot more head on but i turn it like this and my camera is literally on the ground like a lot of people tend to forget that and i forget that whenever i'm shooting video sometimes is that you can literally have your camera on the ground in a lot of cases because this is about two millimeters between the bottom of the phone and the camera itself so you yeah. can absolutely get way, way lower than you think. Yeah. Magic the Blabbering. Dig that name and thank you for the follow, my dude. Awesome stuff, man. Really love it. I really love it. Yeah. I agonized a long time on how to crop it, so I'm glad you ended up liking it. Yeah, I mean, this is a great use of a crop, and that is how you edit properly without it being too egregiously over the top. Mm-hmm. Strong mm-hmm. stuff. All right, we got one more entry, if, I, if I'm counting correct. Yep, that yeah, that's correct. correct. And that last entry, somebody predicted it was going to be in a stray red frame. 
<laughs> and it is indeed. Yep, and it is Samwise 511 who actually took third place, if I remember correctly, in Contest Gunpla 2, making another appearance yet again with some awesome posing, a lot of interesting stuff going on in this shot. Yeah. I I I love this pose. I absolutely love this pose. It's these these are the kinds of things that that you love the Estrella Red Frame for. It pulls off these kinds of poses so well. And I think oh gosh. It's a very anime pose. Homero kind of nails it on the head. It's a very, very yeah. anime pose. Very anime pose. And it, the, the unfortunate oh, thing no for, Shinderu. Yeah, the unfortunate thing for me right now is that this isn't supposed to be a build contest, but the things that are distracting me are the like the seam line in the sheet. <laughs> the nub marks. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess you could say makes it a pretty pretty well composed photo. Um well, that's when you're again, focusing on, yeah. Yeah. Again, we we've got very good use of these leading lines with the uh, with the ground yep. and the sword at the exact same angle that helps really frame um, both help both kids um, you know because everything is focused in between those two leading lines between the sword and the ground leaving a bare minimum amount of negative space in the in the background and uh, yeah it's 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 a it's a really good pose. Yeah, by, by having this sword be so pronounced here, it breaks up a lot of what would be a ton of negative space here. It kind of bisects that, no pun intended mm -hmm. with this being a gigantic sword. It <laughs> it works really well for doing that. Um, my only gripe with this is I kind of feel like the, the victim down here on the bottom is a little far away for my tastes. I feel like if that was a little bit closer, it would... You know it would be a little more um, in focus and, or not in focus necessarily, but it would be more like utilizing the composition, I guess is the best way to put it. I, I, I disagree with that. I think it, it would either benefit more from either being even further away or if at all possible. That might work. The, yeah. Cause the thing that's another thing that sort of distracted me is that it, it, it the guy was clearly run through from behind so how is his top half in front of his bottom? Uh, that's something I noticed with this. The pose yep. on the astray doesn't match the scene of what happened. Yeah. And I think what what I would have loved to have seen um, was maybe clever use of stands to help it make it look like the kit is falling in real time. You know, yeah. make, it, make the top yeah. half separated from its bottom half mid photo. Yeah, you like know, if like that torso was like up in this area above where the or below where the sword is, like kind of coming yeah. off. Yeah, that would have been that, amazing. That would have been that, really good. That would be extremely anime, and I would love it. Yeah, it would be go, the go most whole ham. Anime. Go yeah. whole ham. Yeah. Give me, give me some speed lines and <laughs> you know, lens flare on the sword. Totes. No. It's awesome, though. I, I really dig it. I think you guys did an awesome job. Yeah. And that is our top 20, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as we mentioned before, these were displayed in submission order. So the oldest submission first, newest submission last. And now we have to deliberate over what will be our top three entries. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break. We'll uh, come back probably in about five minutes or so. We're going to discuss what we think are the three best entries out of the 20 that we've shown you here tonight and reveal our winners of the Master Grade Jagan, the Real Grade Full Armor Unicorn, and the High Resolution Gundam Astray Red Frame. To wrap up, Contest Gunpla 2. And then afterwards, we will open up the channel for entries so that you guys can see what everybody entered and the people that, that didn't make Top 20. There were a lot of good entries that didn't make Top 20 as well. Um, so if you didn't make top 20, don't think that you had a bad entry. There was a lot of really good ones that weren't able to make it. Just really limited to 20. Like if I, if I put in every good entry, we'd be here for five hours. I just don't have time nope. for that. Yeah. You know? I, remember, I'm a, I'm a dad now. <laughs> the fact that I was able to secure, you know, two and a half to three hours to, to rate you jokers photos on the Internet. 
Y'all yeah, so should really, be giving me a high res of Stroud. <laughs> yeah, re- really, really, this is all about Stroud me. Navian. Yeah, this, and the fact the fact that he is here spending time with you, you should be you should be feel blessed by his presence, is what he's trying to tell you. <laughs> we're gonna have to have a talk after the stream, just just saying mm, that. No, nah, we, we, we don't. We, we might need to let you go. Nah, anyway, let's gonna... go ahead and talk about the top twenty. We'll be back in five minutes. I'm gonna throw up a couple tracks for transition, probably, maybe. Uh, yeah, let me see how I'm going to do this. Bear with me just a moment. Let's see. I can throw it. I'm hollering about all these good pictures. Shh, we're still live. (laughs) Yeah. Hell yeah, we're live. These pictures are all really good. Y'all have made this hard, and that's a good thing. Indeed. We can go ahead and eliminate Witch, because he's the worst. I mean, what? (laughs) This is still live. Hmm. I just realized, wait a minute. What the hell? Hmm? Interesting. So apparently my background music device software that I've been using to drop the volume on, on iTunes will actually run Discord audio through OBS, like, by accident. That's dope. Huh. That's huh. interesting. Huh. Interesting. Huh. Wow. Wow. Alright, so we might actually need to go like full mute on the stream here. So we are still here. Um, but we only need to go full mute on the stream in order to make this work. So we'll be back in about five minutes, folks. Alright, folks. We're back. How are you? I, I'm glad that, that most of you have stuck around. I see some people left when they saw they weren't in. <laughs> Y'all made it that's, tough, bro. That's, yeah. that's fine. To be that, was, that was a longer deliberation than we had for the uh, for the first one, I think. I'm pretty sure for the first contest. So again, I want to emphasize, thank you all so very, very much for entering. Uh, I want to keep doing I, these. I think our, I think our first one. Huh? What? Jesse. Oh, I'm sorry. I think our first one was longer than that, but maybe that was certainly, we took our time on that. All right, here we go. So then here we are. We're gonna start with the third place, and third place, and I wanna emphasize, by the way, um, I'm gonna do giveaways a little bit different in the future, I think. Um, I'm going to probably offer an or equivalent sort of deal, but for this one, we will be offering up the three prizes. Third place getting the, third place, excuse me, getting the Master Grade Jagan. Second place getting the Real Grade Unicorn Full Armor thing. And the, uh, the first place, of course, winning the high resolution astray red frame um, if any of the participants or any of the winners decide that they don't want their prize and they want to ask about exchanges set that up um, in PMs and if you guys agree on that I'm fine with letting Shin over at Jojo Hobby and stuff.com where you can use the promo code bag to get 10% off your order to um, send the prizes elsewhere um, and of course if you are not in the continental United States Please let me know and we will work out customs and, and fees and things like that. As we talked about in the video, that should not be a surprise. So, with all of that out of my lungs, I think it's time for number three, which actually was probably the one that took the longest because there were about, there were like three or four that we were thinking about for putting in for number three. And we decided to go. Pause for effect. <laughs> That's best roll, please. And I just showed the sidebar. Hopefully you guys weren't looking. <laughs> to the viewers at home, I hope you're doing a drum roll on your own table and anticipate. Womp womp. All right. So third place goes out to Dixie Normus. Congratulations, man. This one actually took a while for us to, to figure out. Like I mentioned, it just because I, I love how this one's so vibrant. Um, I feel like some of the some a lot of the shots had a very muted color palette, which can work really well. But this is one of the few that had a super super vibrant color palette. So great work, Dixie Normus. You should be extremely proud. Um, we'll get in touch via the Discord to uh, let you know about your master grade Jagan. Congratulations. Jagan. Congratulations. 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 <laughs> 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 thank you thank you it was 
Who did the pen pen? <laughs> I think that was I think that was Nelson. God damn. Oh, that's great. All right, second place. This one goes out to a uh, long-standing member of the community, and that's Homero. He'll be getting your real grade full armor unicorn for this awesomely composed shot that has some of the best use of the of a matching color palette out of all of these shots. You done great, Homer. I see you in the chat. Congratulations, my dude. Awesome shot. Just again, great use of your surroundings. I dropped things and trying to grab them. Great use of your surroundings, great use of color. I think that the whole scheme worked phenomenally. Way to make the scale models feel like you're you're part of the war. Like you, you, you did an awesome job for that. So great job. Super, super proud of you. You know who else I'm proud of? Hey Stroud. Everyone. Give us a drum roll on your keyboard, would you? You know who else I'm proud of? Who else are you proud of? A little over a year ago, Shin Arster founded Jojo Hobby and Stuff.com. <laughs> <laughs> and believe it or not, you can use promo code BADGUNPLA10 at checkout to get 10% off your order. And 2% of those purchases goes towards the prize pool for giveaways just like this. The reason I was afford able to afford a Master Grade Jagan and a Real Grade Unicorn Full Armor version for this competition was directly because of your purchases over at jojohobbyandstuff.com using that promo code. So keep doing that. If you don't see stuff on there that you want, then find something else you want. <laughs> like <laughs> It's worth it, and it also contributes to this show. I don't think it's much of a surprise who our first place is. <laughs> this is there. Promotional I'm consideration stalling. provided by. Yeah, promotional consideration provided by Shin Arster at Jojo Hobby and Stuff. Shout out to the sponsor. Thank you all very much. And I just want to say thank you all for the support on the channel as well. Obviously, our YouTube hit 5,000 subscribers, hence Contest Gumpla 2. We just crossed 6,300 subscribers because of the Why I Build video. That video has gained so much more traction than I thought that it would, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. You guys are amazing. I'm so I'm so happy for you. I'm, I'm so happy that, that we've been able to make this amazing accidental community that's now 500 plus strong in the Discord, and I'm thrilled for all of the entries that we had, including our first place winner, Zaki42. Congratulations, man. You deserve it. Congratulations. 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 Actually, hold up. Hold up. Wait. 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 Hold up. Here we go. Congratulations. 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 You're welcome. <laughs> Waiting on stream delay. It's an awesome shot, dude. Like, like legit, we we got out of voice on the stream. I was like, okay, we know who number one is, right? <laughs> like, <Yep. laughs> I think that was the fastest decision we've ever had on a on a giveaway. Zaku42, your shot is amazing. I am making this my wallpaper. It's gorgeous, and I love everything about it. It's just, it's it's stunning. It's a, it's a stunning photo. Great use of color, as I demonstrated by drawing all those lines on it. It's a it's a beautiful use of composition. Everything about it's great. I mean, it just this is a professional shot that deserves more than the 43 people that are watching it right now. So post it on the Reddit or something. Stroud will approve it because I told him to. It's fine. Um, I'll probably post the like the vod of this whenever I upload it. But yeah, you did awesome, man. You you should be extremely proud. This shot is incredible. The crashing waves and just mm, bueno, absolutely bueno. You should be extremely proud. You've seen it. You've seen it. Remember that one? Right? You are really out of it. It's almost like you got in a car accident or something. She could have died, guys. It wouldn't be really Oof. sad. But you're still here. 
<laughs> anyway, Zaka42, congratulations. I will hit up all of the winners in the Discord later tonight to get your contact info, and we will get those prizes out as soon as they're released. Like, I don't actually think that the high res is even out yet, but you will be getting that no, high I resolution in a straight red frame. The only thing that's readily available right now is the Jagan. Yeah, is the Jagan. The uh, other two are still on pre-order, but as soon as they are released, there will be one coming your way honorable mentions listen you're gonna see all of the entries now we're going to open up the the uh entries channel for everybody to see the other entries feel free to take a look at them and enjoy them uh, all of the entries um that made the top 20 will be in rotation during the transitions for these streams so keep an eye out for that for the next stream on wednesday we'll be um picking up uh we i think we decided on the tall geese the real great tall geese for the next wednesday streams we did going forward and then we'll finally get to the master grade jesta twitch builds master grade jesta next saturday at 7 p.m central standard time i know i've said that a few times but like i forgot that like this stream was happening and stuff so that's a thing huh get get zaku 42 in here speech 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 i don't he, he hasn't like He's come in the voice ever yeah. i've talked with him before <laughs> No, you should be extremely proud, man. That's a great shot. You, it's it's gorgeous, and I adore everything about it. And and I and I love you. So shall I open up the entries? Channel? Open it. Do I it. already did. Yeah. See, which I'm, I'm looking at your at your shot that you have there in the discussions channel with the wider crop on that on that star image. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That that's that's what we're talking about. Just having that little bit of an extra crop. great work guys all right well that is going to do it for our stream tonight thank you all so very very much for hanging out even if you didn't win thank you for hanging out and thank you for entering because we all are doing this as part of the learning experience right even if you didn't win you now know of ways to make your shots even better for next time there is so much good content this this took a while for us to figure out what was going to be in our top three but I'm I'm super proud and we are going to do more of these giveaways. You know, the more that um, the more traction that this channel gets, as it's been getting a lot of traction lately, the more of these giveaways we're going to do. So definitely still support Shin over at Jojo Hobby and stuff .com with that promo code bag. Gumbo 10. Please don't do that into the microphone and we will <laughs> we'll be able to do even more giveaways. So thank you all so much for hanging out. Let's go ahead and find somebody to raid and we'll uh, we'll send over the stream that way. Good stuff, guys. That was fun. That was really fun. Thank you all so very much. Who's who's all streaming right now? We got uh, Kapufe working on the Master Grade Tall Geese. Uh, High Grade Sanandu Stein. We got Collegiate Rocket League. What? All right. I made it into plastic. Hmm. Let's see. Who else? Using scale modeling right now. This is the top scale modeling stream on Twitch right now. Yeah. Yeah. How about my first ever real grade by Speedlash? He's working on the RG Tall Geese, which we'll be starting up next week. That that kind of rolls in well. Still got two people watching right now. You guys want to shoot it over to there and give him a couple uh, a couple dozen viewers? Hell yeah. Yeah, let's give him a few viewers. I think that sounds like a plan. My first ever Tall real Goose grade. Up. And it's the kit we'll be starting on Wednesday. That's awesome. All right, here we go. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much. Thank you all for hanging out. We will see you in the Discord. Hit up that Discord link at the bottom and also on twitch.tv forward slash bad gunpla. YouTube.com forward slash bad gunpla. See you next time. Goodbye. See you. Bye.